This is Solid Snake, and you're listening to Three Black Geeks. So pay some damn attention. Anything you say may be used against you. He's a cyborg, you idiot. You recorded every word you said. You're dead. We killed you. His memory is admissible as evidence. You're going to have to kill it. Get out of the car, for God's sake! <laughs> Robocop, the future of law enforcement. gentlemen as always every month we make sure we do a franchise what franchise we do none of your goddamn business we powwow together and we say hey what have we not done in a bu- in bulk last year we did what did we do last year karate kid karate kid i believe yeah last year we did karate kid oh my god did you did you do this hillary swank one as well yes we did oh uh, yeah we did uh, we Continue. did all we we uh the year before that was Terminator and that was like one of my favorite ones really no bullshit and then the I Matrix the year it. before it was great it was the awesome. Matrix was the one that started all of this shit off was us doing a Matrix because it was just so great when we talked about how shitty uh the last one and that one um and no the last one and all uh, unloaded was it was so much fun but this year we go to uh, a series that my wife said. Y'all did that before. No, we, we fucking didn't. have it. We <laughs> fucking have it. And that is RoboCop. For whatever reason, you think three black geeks would have said RoboCop. We would have done RoboCop in some capacity, but no, no, we haven't. And this year is going to be fun because 
uh, I got, at least out of my circle of friends, the most RoboCop person I know. And that's somebody who doesn't follow the fucking law to no type of degree. And that is Mo Porne. Mr. Porne, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got an OCP logo tattooed on my finger, so... <laughs> <laughs> You're already like, a part of it. You're yeah, a part I'm, of the problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm a part of the problem. You know. Hey, I so work let, for I work for Dick Jones. So, <laughs> Dick so, Jones. So let me ask. So let me ask you, Mo. Uh, did your heart sink when Orion disappeared? Oh my God! Like honestly, there's there's a couple of film companies that really hurt to watch them die, and Orion is by and far one of one of the biggest tragedies. Um, yeah, I mean, like, cause Orion did, ha, ha, did several of my favorite movies of all time. Like the two biggest hits for me were the fact that like knowing that Orion did RoboCop, obviously RoboCop's my second favorite movie of all time. You know, mm -hmm. like it, my top five is really fucking weird, but like number one is seven samurai because like I'm secretly, I'm still fucking an 18 year old pretentious art film fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, and then number two is fucking RoboCop because it's near perfection. Like, honestly, as far as like a film is concerned, it's n it's as close to perfection as you can get without being directed by Akira Kurosawa. So, um, so yeah, RoboCop was a big one. And then, of course, ironically, uh, not even ironically, but like funnily enough, uh, they also did um, the Burt Reynolds classic that uh, that I got to see in the theaters with John Cross, which was a weird experience um malone so <laughs> they, they did both those and like and i love malone so much that i had a giant sticker made to put on my laptop so i just <laughs> had this giant fucking malone sticker on my laptop i like to say for the record um the character of donald johnson is my spirit animal just putting it out there <laughs> <laughs> that, if there's ever a character in a movie that I could sit there and just really see myself being, Donald Johnson. He's a guy that's been in all three RoboCops, and he's just there for the ride. <laughs> you know what? Uh, no bullshit. It's a weird thing with me. RoboCop was the first movie to maybe really recognize how white people's lips look like. I am... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fucking kid. Look, no bullshit. This is not D.O. D saying something borderline racist because it's a white. Fuck no. Uh uh. For whatever reason, because Peter Weller always like did that little thing with his lips in this movie. I have just I obsessed over it as a kid. <laughs> Get her alive. You're coming with me. <laughs> like, why your lips look like that? <laughs> <laughs> Why the middle part of your lip like dip in, but the rest is like, hey. like doing this hold weird on. Elvis movement? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go, before we get too far down the rabbit hole, the rabbit hole of white people's <laughs> lips, I want I want to talk about Johnson again for a second. He, um, he has one of the best reaction shots in the entire first film. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. But yeah, go like, ahead. <laughs> like it, it, it's towards the end, like after fucking. Dick, dick gets killed. Like they, they just have this like You're we, fired. Yeah, right, right. And then they cut to Johnson and just kinda just Johnson just kinda goes, Yeah. <laughs> he just gives one of those little yeah, you know? Cause like cause he's such a pussy that like he can't like outwardly express how he feels about Dick being killed, but like he needs that little moment of yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's why that's why he's my spirit it animal, because it's like yeah. hey, Mo, hey Mo, just to solidify it. Yo, Mo, just to, sorry, sorry. Mo, Go ahead. just to solidify it, you also see you also see it he doesn't even have to say a thing. My man turned straight to Murphy, gave him the thumbs up. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> that was such a black man thumbs up. <laughs> Dude, again, I have to empathize with this. If I'm the only black person in that group, that's me all the way. It's like, fuck AD. this. If I gotta be this person, that's yeah, me. I mean, AD. yeah, he, he's a black dude stuck in white corporate world. I actually really, I'm in the in the fucking 80s too. Like, I feel I'm, bad for the dude. Man, I gotta, I have to say, I, have to I, have to say, right there, nigga. I gotta say, uh, D, not only, not only was that a black man thumbs up, but that was a black man in 1984 with a good job thumbs up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's the one dude that made it out the hood. He's Calvin. <laughs> that was the most, that was the firmest thumbs up I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, because even I'm like, I'm like the dude from Office Space where I'm looking at Donald like, 
what exactly do you do? <laughs> I survive all three RoboCop movies. <laughs> That's that's saying something because there's very because even fucking Peter Weller doesn't survive all three Robocop. Peter Weller, like all three Robocop movies, we've seen Murphy get quote unquote killed several times. Yeah, I mean, but you have to you have to remember that Murphy is a fucking Jesus allegory. <laughs> so of course he's gonna get killed over and over again and fucking brought back over and over again. I really again. need to know who at Orion looked at Felton Perry and was like, hey Felton! So what are you doing today? Uh, you want to be in RoboCop 3? All right, cool. <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah, basically. Hey, guys, we need a good-looking white guy that can purse his lips out. Who can fucking do it? <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, I, okay, so I'm one of those kids that, like, I caught this. I, caught, I saw RoboCop. I was six years old because my dad didn't know any better when we were watching TV as a kid. Um <laughs> Compared to now, where you wouldn't you wouldn't dare show a six year old kid RoboCop, but back then it's like I don't know. It's just me and my dad were just watching TV on I'm a sorry. Sunday. I was gonna say maybe I'm from a different family, but I'm I, sorry, I, I what, was fucking. I'm just, no, but seriously, like I, I don't know. Maybe because I'm assuming a lot of people are just tight about movies and stuff and showing rated R to kids to an extent. I don't know. That's just I'm, my all right, mentality. All right, Chris, Chris, Chris. Chris. I'm not counting you and your kids. No. I'm not counting that. I hope, I no, hope no. you know that. No, no, no. No, this is how I know you got don't have any kids because you don't fucking know. I'm sorry. You know how much parents our generation cusses? A rated R movie is fine as long as there are no titties. They're fine. True, true. true. They are fine. I don't know. Because, because do, you know, do you know what to do with a seven-year-old boy and a rogue titty pops out? No, it's scary. It's scary. But if I'm looking at, I don't know, like, I'm, like if I'm looking at, um, I'm just going to throw something out there, like a radar movie with no nudity, fuck yeah, sit down, son, let's watch this shit. Uh, my dad showed me Total Recall when I was seven. I shouldn't have saw the three titties, but I did. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that, too. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I, think, uh, I'm watching, I, I saw, saw that today. From my defense. Oh. For my defense, after watching Terminator 2 so many times, and then I go back and go, huh, the Terminator. Oh, this is the first one. I go, I watched the first one, expecting it to be anything, you know, just remotely close to the second movie. I got about a good 45 minutes in. And, and you it, realized it's so much better. That and. Like, that. <laughs> I don't like, I am the of the weird, uh, you know, disposition that I actually don't like Terminator 2. Like, it's an okay movie, but like Terminator 1 is a great action film and I, and I action visceral yeah well. exactly i don't like the second one as I much mean, what, i mean what i'm getting that mo is i got about a good 45 minutes in and i wasn't ready to see michael like michael bind slamming linda hamilton yeah Ooh. yeah yeah but i'll you say this that, that happens in the movie <laughs> and, and look and look look here's the thing like you know we'll just call him reese um <laughs> like like fr- frankly he's what makes that scene anyway because like i don't i mean like I don't, i'm not here to judge people's looks you know i'm a fucking fat ugly dude myself but um you know I- i'm not into like, linda hamilton i don't like the way she looks it's not i'm not attracted to her you know whatever it doesn't matter he's a hot dude you know that's all i'm saying like yeah. I'm, I'm secure enough in my masculinity to, to you know, to say if a dude's hot or not. He's, he's a good looking dude. Let's just be real. You gotta. I mean, look, no, look, let's no, just be no, real. Mo, Everybody Mo, wants. All, hold on, Mo. You have all the right in the world to say that because that man is Solid Snake on the cover of Metal Gear. Right. <laughs> he's. <laughs> I mean, who's and, who's hot, and who's hotter than Solid Snake? Why are we talking about Terminator and not Robocop? All I'm saying is this. <laughs> I, will, I, I will say this though. We're getting to that. I will say this though. As a kid, though, six-year-old kid seeing RoboCop 1, this movie captured my imagination off the break. The fact that as a kid, like, you know, as a kid, you don't think about the horror of a guy getting turned into a robot. You're a kid like, man, oh. I want to be a robot. This is great, yeah. you know, and you don't realize that that's a horrible fucking disposition to be in. You're a robot for the rest of your life. Like, you, you know you know what movie made me not want to be a robot anymore? Like, because I, I wanted to be a robot for a good long time, um, you know, probably until I was like 18, 19 uh, I believe it was uh, Tetsuo, the Iron Man, that made me oh, no longer yeah. a fucking robot. <laughs> like, nope, not today. I, you know what? I think I'm okay not being a fucking robot. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need those problems. <laughs> that uh, man, you know what? I was fine dreaming. I was a child. I didn't know. 
Well, you want to talk about inappropriate movies that kids, that, you know, that watching inappropriate movies as a kid. My one of my father, who my father was not a big fan of films. Like there was like three movies he liked, and most of them were World War II films. So it was like Torah, 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 Midway, Patton, you know, and for some reason Blues Brothers, and then Stripes. So we watched Stripes all the time when I was a kid. <laughs> that. That movie has so much goddamn new. It took me ten years to realize the joke of John Larroquette. John Larroquette saying, "God, I wish I was a loofah," because yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what a fucking loofah was. But when I found out, I said, "Oh, that's fucking funny," <laughs> you know. <laughs> now you get it. And then, of course, there's like the fucking mud wrestling. There's tits all over that fucking movie. <laughs> it's also it's also the movie where I fell in love with PJ Souls and fucking Sean Young, you know. Uh, Cause they're gorgeous, you know? And well, then I, I and, and then I grew up and I saw rock and roll high school and I said, Oh, now I understand why everybody else likes PJ souls. <laughs> I mean, but like this, like, okay. So like, you know, you don't get pay attention to the corporate stuff in the movie. You just like, Hey, get to the Robocop. But like the whole movie, the whole world surrounding it is, is Detroit in the future. Yeah. A corporation called OCP took over. Basically they run the police department and they basically, in running the police department, they could get to run down the ghettos to turning it, gentrify it, basically. You might as yeah, well say it's gentrification. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, Chris. So how is this different from real life? <laughs> not. I mean, I mean, if anything, D, I mean, I mean, no, I can answer that. I can answer that, D. You want to know what makes it, you want to know what makes it, uh, I can't even say it's not even different from real life. First of all, if anything, this movie predicted real life. Well, let's be real. O- I'm o- just o- o- OCP, oh, let's sure. be real, guys. OCP didn't build that boss-ass waterfront in D.C. Just saying, just saying, just saying. Uh- <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah, every, every, yeah, everything from, like, you know, military drones it predicted yeah. Um, to corporate takeover and it was also like one of the first you know like real like uh social satires Mm -hmm. you know that that, like i think people forget about that about robocop they keep thinking of it as oh it's just this dumb action film where this guy becomes a robot and he's a cop yada 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 yeah it's not like we're talking about fucking like kung fury or fucking like wolf cop you know which which are which are are fun movies but literally like kung fury he's a cop you know and he does kung fu so it makes sense and then i mean although nothing about that movie really makes sense but um (laughs) You know, although I do per- particularly appreciate Tricerocop, you know, yeah, but um, best partner, best partner in the world, you know, and, and so stuff like that, where it's just this sort of goofy idea that's not really expounded upon. But with Robocop, like, you know, like, first off, you you have to have a madman like Paul Verhoeven behind the behind the helm on that one, because <laughs> the dude's nuts. Like, he's legitimately insane in the best possible way. Um, and, uh, yeah, and he took, he took it, he made the social commentary like there, and there's a weird fucking Jesus allegory in there. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> it's a weird allegory to Jesus that just gets stuffed in it. You know, it's a lot of the sci-fi uh, movies. And I talked about last, we talked about this before, Chris, a lot of them in the seventies and eighties and some in the nineties, they sprinkle a lot of social commentary that either like a few critics will mention but they know the public wouldn't give a shit right. or the ones where it's like littered all the way in there and Mo just said it right ah shut up this is a dumb movie with a robot shut up <laughs> like and then you look at it 20 years from now it's like holy sh- shit <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and, and that's the thing like i've been a huge robocop fan since i was a kid you know like it, it's always been one of my favorite movies and, which is weird because i don't have a lot of those like i have a lot of movies that i should have liked as a kid that i didn't really discover until like my late teens when i really started watching movies but robocop has always been one of those movies for me and you know and i always understood the social commentary i always understood you know the the weird jesus allegory because before i became such a militant fucking atheist 
Um, you know, I, I, I even possible. <laughs> <laughs> how, can you, how can you be militant about not giving a shit? I always wanted to know. How well, to well, it, it, no, no. Atheism isn't about not giving a shit. It, that's agnosticism. Uh, ah, that's what it yeah, is. yeah, no, yeah. No, no. no, no. I, 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 I very much give a shit. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually what you would call an anti-theist in that I would like to see all religion go away. But th- that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, but yeah, but before that, I, like, I was actually very religious, you know, and, it, and then I read the fucking Bible, and that's what changed my mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, what? But, yeah, exactly. There's so many weird contradictions in there. Actually, just, hold I, on. Mo, I got a quick one for you. I want to ch- test it out on you. And uh, 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 CJ, you already know about that. You already know about this. So that's this his way of saying fact. shut up. <laughs> so, no, so, no, no. Check it out. This is what it is. Isaac looks at Isaac looks at uh, um, Isaac looks at Abraham for real, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going that? Why are you leaving? No, you had the knife out, motherfucker. Go ahead and say something. <laughs> That's why D questions everything in the Bible. <laughs> oh. hey, Abraham anyway, had anyway. Alzheimer's, and nobody said anything. <laughs> I have a question for y'all. Since this movie did have such a big social commentary behind it, especially yeah. especially when you watch it today. So, <clears throat> since since this movie did predict a lot of things that have come true, we see Detroit. Never did become that dystopian utopia that it tries to describe itself, or or is what it Dick, tried. or is what no, or is what Dick tried. Jones, hold on, or is what Dick Jones wanted to do? Because you mm-hmm. saw that model, right? Since that never happened throughout all three RoboCop movies, and fast forward to today, Detroit is still looking like it just got hit by a nuke. Um, how long do you think the police department will have its own Ed Two Hundred Nine? First We're not far. Let's just be really real, Chris. You're talking about like you're talking about like real life, like in like yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like we in real are life. not I, too far away. From We're that. not that far. I mean, I, we're not. It's, they're not going to have an Ed Two Hundred Nine, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind no. of security droid. Oh, no, let's just be, no, hold on. What I'm referring to, what I'm really referring to, is how long before we get a robot in our like in our police department that can barely walk downstairs. <laughs> Well, here's, gotta, well, here's the question. Hold on. Hold on. I'm making a joke here. I need to get this out. Uh, <laughs> it, it depends because, like, if they don't program in the pig squealing sound for when he hits the box, <laughs> <laughs> then, then never. They're never going to do it. it. It needs to have oh. that pig squealing sound for when it hits oh. the bottom step. Oh, sorry, no. Hey, Eris, the reason <laughs> why, the reason why, they will never ever make an Ed 29. It's not because of that. It's because we already got cops shooting up people for no reason anyway. There oh, you go. DC, you <laughs> broke. Hold on, you broke. You already beat me to my joke. I was gonna say, well, I know if they don't, if they don't put in the pig squealing sound, they'll make sure that the robot is innoc- like shooting innocent people as a malfunction. They'll make sure that's in there. Well, well, let's, well, but, 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 but that's but, actually that's actually the most unrealistic scene of the film. Is a is a cop. Uh, accident, quote unquote, accidentally shooting a white guy. I mean, well, well let's be real about this, guys. <laughs> let's be real, guys. Let's be real, guys. Ed two hundred nine doesn't see color. Okay, <laughs> clearly he does not That's, see color. Are you kidding me? He has a Technicolor screen. Chris. He doesn't see Shut color. Up. He kills. He kills rich white guys. All right, that dude had it coming. White guys. Hey, Chris. Hey, that Chris. Was glitch. You already know. You already know how movies like this go. They don't show the ghetto enough to see all the black people. You know, Ed 209 has been laying out all of us. You already know no, that. But I also have to point out here, you're talking about the future. There's a point in this film where they introduce the piece of shit 3000, which I'm like, that's about on brand with today's cars. What the uh, what the, the POS what the, 3000? Yeah, the actually, POS 3000. A- actually, if, if, if memory serves, I believe that's actually a Ford Tempo. Yep. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's a Ford Tempo. Yeah, because I That's remember my, 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 my mom actually bought one at some point, and I'm like, I'm like, Mom, you, you literally bought a fucking POS 6000. <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? No, but they had a lot of uh, Ford oh, Tauruses. The they had a lot of Ford Tauruses in this, in, this, in, this, in, this, in this movie, though. Well, they should, well, I got a question. Hold on, I got a question. Well, hey, Mo, shit. I got a question for you, sir. Please, yes. 
So <laughs> when you sent that to your mom, did she did you did she happen to say that she bought it for a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my mom. I, I'm actually fairly certain to, that to this day, my mom has never seen RoboCop. So because she's very much one of those people who'd be like, "Oh, he's just a guy in a robot suit. Dude. Who cares?" You know. <laughs> Like she, like let's put it this way: she only just started trying to watch the fucking MCU films like this year. Oh I'm, boy! I'm, I'm like, mom, you've got 20 years of fucking movies to catch up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll say this though: the fact that this movie, you know, we get this whole thing. With oh, the Mo, Mo, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Mo. Yeah. If that, if that's the case, never show your mom Akira. She will lose her goddamn mind. Oh, my, my mom doesn't have the eyesight or patience to attempt to read subtitles. Well, you know, <laughs> well, it's, that just that just won't happen. Just, I love my. I, don't get me wrong. I love my mom. She's like honestly like one of the biggest sweethearts ever. But she definitely does not have the fucking attention span or you know wherewithal to be able to read subtitles while. You know, wow, whatever. Like, let's put it this way. One time I watched, this is going to sound weird, but I watched Blade Runner with my mom one time. Like, I basically sat her down on the couch and forced her to watch it. <laughs> and um, and I remember it was several months later, she says to me, she goes, what was the name of that movie that we watched that time? And I'm like, what movie are you talking about, mom? Because at the time I was making her watch a lot of movies. And uh, she goes, you know, that movie with the guy who's attractive, who I like. And I'm like what fucking movie are you talking about? She's like, you know, the guy, he's really attractive. I really like him. What's the one movie? And then finally, I guess it would have been a couple of weeks later, I was watching Blade Runner again because, you know, nerd. And, um, and she goes, yeah, this is the movie. And I'm like, were you talking about Harrison Ford? She goes, no, I know who Harrison Ford is. That guy, the guy, he's attractive. I like him. She was talking about fucking Rutger Hauer. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. My mom, awesome. I'm, my mom is awesome, yes. Oh, man. I just like how this movie, you could already tell off the break that Dick Jones is a bad guy. He just has, Ronnie Cox has that look to him. Ronnie Cox plays such a good bad guy. It's amazing. <laughs> and he introduces Ed 209. And look, if I'm a person in this board meeting and a giant robot is being introduced, I'm walking out like, yeah, I got to go to the bathroom real quick. Y'all have fun with this. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> I mean, now don't get me wrong, you know, fucking Morton's a piece of shit, too, but he's, like, a piece of shit who's not the villain, you know what I mean? Like, he's just, like, a bad businessman, but, yeah. but, yeah. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, how could Bob Morton be the bad guy when he's the one who had the good idea the whole time? He had the good idea, but he's still a piece of shit in how he implemented it, you know, he's, like, and, like, the way they tried to, like, control, I mean, you know, Bob Robocop. Morton like, is a cult, cult, fueled fucking executive that that's on brand yeah that's it's actually brand. pretty on brand <laughs> what i mean i mean it's, nah, man, man, it's, it's on brand cuz i mean think about this think about this for a second you got you got the young guy he sees the old dude try to uh, try to implement an idea in the middle of the board meeting, and you know for a fact that he is sitting there on pins and needles, going, "Oh, please let this fail! Please, yeah, let, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. please let this fail!" And when it fails, he runs up. Like, he, I mean, he runs up uh, like to to the like to the head of OCP and say, uh, uh, "You know, just just so you know." My team down in R and D, we 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 got our own thing. It's called the RoboCop program. You should come by and see it sometime. Thank you, yeah. son. Uh, I think I might do that. <laughs> I like that's how it all he did, that was all he took, and, and the moment he did that, here's me. Oh, Dick, gonna kill you. Oh yeah, yeah. Dick, you don't like it. Dick, <laughs> I don't like it. I had to kill Bob. No, Morton. hey, you, you know what the best part about that thing? The the best part about that scene for me was after that that poor poor executive got lit the fuck up. Um, everybody was all panicking, panicking. Here's the CEO, Dick. I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, there's somebody dead on your floor. Dan or Hurley I, I, is I, perfect. I love the, I love the, yeah, I love the fact that the character doesn't even have a goddamn name. He's just the old man. Well, because Ronnie Cox set the tone. <laughs> Dick yeah. Jones set the tone. The old man. I'm like, so no, no name, huh? All right, cool. Yeah, no, no name. Oh, man. He's the man, literally, man. If somebody's there, like, if, if we would walk up to him, Chris, it's like, 
Are you the one that oppresses black people? Billy. Oh my God! Is first it off, a- first off, I think we can confirm that the old man is who hired Donald Johnson. First off, so you know we we already know that. We already know that. <laughs> oh, without yeah. a doubt, yeah, because he actually you know seems to not be a huge piece of shit. Donald Johnson is less of a piece of shit because he just. No, I'm followed- not talking about. I'm not talking about Johnson. I'm talking about the old man. You know, oh, he yeah, yeah. doesn't seem like he's a huge piece of shit. So he yeah, follows clearly. the money. He follows the money. That's I mean, he ain't a piece of shit. I mean, clearly. Clearly, he he bulldozes an orphanage to make a high rise, <laughs> but he is not an evil man. He's a uh, sure. uh, what's it uh, sure. Bo- hey, Chris. Mm-hmm. hey Chris, sure he takes hookers to his house and you know use them use them for archery practice. But he's a nice <laughs> man. I see him as the proto uh, Ted Turner. Yeah, that's what he is. Uh, I can see. You know what I see him as? You really want to know what I see him as? Bob a Brown. dude that was on. Je- a dude that was on Jeffrey Epstein's. He's on the list. He's on the list. Hey man, I got a twelve and a thirteen for you. I got a twelve and a thirteen year old for you, and I gotta go with it. I would buy that for a dollar. Click. <laughs> Actually, no. You know who the no. You wanna know who the old man really is? Who? He's a uh, he's McCullough <laughs> during the uh, like during the. The Trump investigation when that like when he sat there and was answering all them questions and every single question that was fired at him he responds with I'm not gonna get into that <laughs> I'm not gonna do that not at all Mm-mm. that has nothing to I do got- with my that's got nothing to do with my investigation I'm not getting into that I'm like oh, the whole time I was watching that I said you know what I hope y'all enjoy this because that's gonna be his go to answer this is his <laughs> version of I plead the fifth from Chappelle's show. <laughs> I mean, you're head of a corporation that owns a city. It's like, what are you going to do? They, they can't do shit to you. So it's like, eh, whatever. We, we can't do anything, you know. But like, eh, I'll entertain this. Now, I'll say this. Uh, we, we get introduced to Anne and Murphy, her new partner. and um, Nancy yeah, Allen. Yeah, Nancy Allen and um, Murphy. And Murphy, off the break, you know, he clearly, he's the hero. So you already know what, what, the, what the deal is with him. You know, we get all the foreshadowing, him spinning the gun, and he's like, oh, my kid loves his cowboy, and I'm like, oh, you're going to die. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's going to die. TJ Laser. TJ Laser. Hey, Dad, can you do it? <laughs> TJ Laser. Hold on, TJ Laser. Yo, yo, Mo. I, have you I, ever heard? I think it's kind of neat. Yo, <laughs> yo, Mo. Have you ever heard of a more '80s name than that? TJ Laser. Yeah, I mean, TJ Laser pretty much takes the cake on that shit. It's fucking <laughs> you know hilarious. What, a, you know what? There are so many. You know what? I I can't believe they found the most generic name to go for a future cop <laughs> I, honestly future because cop. Be, because it's such a it's such a stupid thing you know like the whole tj laser thing so it's it's so stupid that it doesn't because i i, I feel i i realized that like paul verhoven didn't give a shit about that like he just like i need to throw something in there to remind his partner that maybe he's still kind of part human so like let's just have him flip his gun a couple of times we'll say he learned it from a tv show that his kid likes <laughs> what what's the name of the tv show ah fuck it who cares it's tj laser you know <laughs> no you forgot the, you forgot the one moment <laughs> you forgot the moment 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 before they said the name <laughs> Yeah, right, right, exactly, exactly. It's like, <laughs> Wait. I, I, I know what it is. Hold on a second. Don't move. Okay, it's TJ Laser. Okay. Wait, Mo, hold yeah. on. Let's think about that for a hot second. They didn't just come up with a name. They actually had real life footage. Yeah, they sh- yeah there's footage of the fucking show because they have to show him doing it. And of course. I mean, you know what? I appreciate movies that do that. That's how you yeah. I, I appreciate it's, movies it's, that do that because it's like uh, when we talked about Jingle All the Way and they actually show a Turbo Man show. I was like, you know what? I appreciate that you went out your way to show a Turbo Man TV show in all the bells and whistles. All right, all right. I mean, that is wonderful that y'all went out one Saturday and just wasted fucking time. That is awesome. <laughs> now, here's the um, thing. <laughs> did, did, did you guys... that, hey, look, got to push that merchandise somehow. Might Did you look. guys know that Nancy Allen in that film was actually supposed to have long hair? Like, so, like, the the whole point was when she took her helmet off at the beginning, like, all this long hair was supposed to flow out, like, almost kind of, like, She's a woman! Ah, and, that- yeah, right. So they really needed to, like, show... <gasps> She's a woman. Meanwhile, like, oh, and let's let's talk about how fucking progressive this movie is, too, because they had already shown, like, I don't know if it was, like, right before or right after they introduced uh, uh, Lewis, but 
you know, they, they had the multi fucking gender locker rooms where everybody like it was very Starship Troopers, you know. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah they did, they did. Vernon you know, is pretty pretty infamous for that because he'll put that in every movie if he acts like yeah, Starship exactly. Troopers was more in your face like tits and i'm like yeah there's all yeah, right exactly. cool like, whereas, yeah, whereas in robocop there's just sort of like a quick scan by where you see some boobs but who cares yeah you know but that but that's sort of the point is that like it's he's representing a future where it doesn't fucking matter like gender doesn't mean anything you know yeah um but ironically they have that and yet they're supposed to show off that nancy allen is a woman by having her hair flop out of her helmet as she takes it well, off but well, I'm, well, but I'm really here. I, well, I, think, I think Nancy Allen's actually the one who put the fucking kibosh on that too. I think she said like it doesn't right, make it sense. Fucking, it doesn't well, make. Mo, you gotta sense. understand here. We need to see your long, flowing hair because when men don't see breasts, we just think you're a blob walking down the street. How would we know? This is true. <laughs> this is true. Well, well look, I, I guess that's Mo, Mo, <laughs> Mo, stop thinking with your pussy and think with your penis. Okay, okay. Mo, I, Trying to make film. I All right, where's the hey, hey, Mo. <laughs> yeah, well, I do. I do got to add one thing. While it would have been interesting to see uh, Nancy Allen with long hair, I'll tell you somebody who had good hair in this movie. Freaking Peter Weller. Even with that ginormous forehead, that hair yes. is still there. It's like, hmm. Because <laughs> hold on, because and the thing is, and the thing is, soak it in. Soak it in as much as you can, because you're only going to see it for, like, the first ten minutes. Heaven forbid. Heaven it's, heaven it's covered up by a fucking bald cap. And, I'm oh, just like, saying, the rest of the movie, he has LeBron James's hairline. <laughs> uh, first off, first off, I got to jump ahead with Peter Weller here. It is so telling when you watch Star Trek Into the Darkness. I'm like, yo, Peter, get rid of the fucking hair. Your, your shit is <laughs> balding, my brother. What are yeah. you doing here, man? Well, I mean, like, even even going back a little further than that one, like, he had that fucking guest star appearance on fucking uh, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. You know, like, he just looked like walking hell. You know? <laughs> it's like leather incarnate. Yeah, literally, yeah, I mean, he looks like fucking Ellen Barkin's forehead, you know. It's just... <laughs> There's a name I haven't heard in years, Ellen Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I ran don't, don't, don't look up her literally forehead. ran out space on his forehead and shit. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Um, Kurt Wynn Smith is the MVP of this movie because yes, everybody's yeah. like, oh, that 70s show. No, nah, this, movie made, me, a robot, this movie made me a fan of him because he has so many lines. One of them that we see off the break. Can you fly, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> and he says like it in how. such a way it's like yo this is awesome i love him i love him yeah. you, know so, well, you know what's so great about that though right before that he 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 he, he uh grab they grab on um, bobby and said kobe before they did that <laughs> the fact that they that, that the, the guns that they had in this this fucking movie blew body parts off yeah like just Completely yeah. all Hong Kong shotguns, buddy. That's what it is. And, and, and Chris, and much like uh, our boy, the emissary from uh, 300, they don't seem to be screaming in agony like they should. <laughs> like, 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 like again, the emissary when he cut his arm off, here's his exact reaction: my, my arm. arm. <laughs> no, no, no. This is just so regular, Harris. My arm. My arm. <laughs> Scream. No, but you also Scream. remember too. Look, uh, hold on. And you know the other end of that spectrum? The other end of that spectrum is our favorite movie, guys. Miami Connection. Click! <laughs> <laughs> no, but you also have to realize, too, we also forget, too, Clarence and them, they have been wreaking havoc on Detroit Police Department because they're fucking Man, coming back these getting motherfuckers fucking have rocked. Been, they, have, they have been dropping shits on the... They've been just straight up dunking on the, on the, on the Detroit <laughs> Police Force for a while, man. There's only there's only a there's only a handful of movies that have really good like gangs like like I'm not talking about like organized crime sort of stuff like like mobs and shit like that like where there's just like a fucking gang and like RoboCop has without a doubt one of the best I mean like every single one of them is just fun and interesting and weird and you know or or dies in a really fucking cool way like fuck I mean like let's let's just point the finger at Emil you know Dude, with, uh, you know with, what? with maybe one of the coolest fucking deaths in cinema history. I think the eighties uh, had got a blasted. Really... He got blasted with that acid. It wasn't oh, even yeah. acid. Sorry, that was toxic waste. Toxic, toxic waste. waste. And you know yeah. how, how 
Yeah. You know how movie you know how movies work with toxic waste. It it does whatever the writer wants it to. <laughs> That's I mean, it's toxic. either you know Toxic Avenger, you get dumped in and you turn into an ugly, super strong dude. You get dumped yeah, in toxic you waste, toxic you might waste, die. You, eight, <laughs> you might get radiation you get poisoning. Toxic waste, you get eight fingers, fourteen <laughs> eyes, you become a spider. It does whatever the fucking writer wants it dude, to. Well, first off, out of the whole gang, um, I also second second uh, spirit animal, uh, Joe. I love that guy. Who was who was Joe? The one that laughed. He, he, he was the laugh. yes. He was he was the uh, laugh. He was the mind if I zip this up. <laughs> the hyena of the group. So the <laughs> hyena. Yo, did you know what? He enjoyed his job. Know. He enjoyed yeah, his job. He, 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 he definitely enjoyed his job. You want to know my favorite line from him? Good night, sweet prince. <laughs> <laughs> And then you know the fact that he had to turn around and justify that that joke was funny because he's like, "Oh come on, that like, come on, that line was funny." He's like, you know, oh, I, have, I have a feeling that was very much written in the script. <laughs> I do, I do. Well, oh, you know what, Chris? You know what? This sounds weird. Uh, uh, about a month ago, well, actually not a month ago, a few weeks ago, I was watching a regular show, and Kurt Wood Smith is on that show. He plays Gene, the other park manager that does the other uh part yeah and just hearing kurt wood smith do the voice right i'm sitting there the whole time like he wants to cuss so bad and it will make <laughs> the so much better but even then without him cussing it still felt like i was listening to this version of kurt wood smith just really just always shouting at people telling you telling them what to do and shit like that and i was thinking like man this is robocop version <laughs> Dude, if JG well, J- 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 Quintel could do an unedited version of regular show, he'd let that shit fly. You know it. Oh, yeah, you would. Oh, without a doubt. Like, without a doubt. Like, Benson, I'm a, like, Benson, get over here. I'm going to kick your ass. He was, yeah, he said ass. <laughs> like, like, that made me laugh, too, because remember he was on uh, Rick and Morty. Yeah. Remember he was on Rick and Morty. He was like, I say we take a nuke and shove it up that head's ass. <laughs> I'm like, of course they made him say ass. And that was the first <laughs> sentence they made him say. Save the show. Of course, get it out the way. But he has a such That's a how you use him. He is a great. He is one of the more underrated. Um, he is one of the more underrated uh, character actors, and he is one of the best villains. If you want a villain or just a regular antagonist. He's great for that shit, man. So oh, man. yeah, yeah. I, I, like like him, he, he, ma- he makes his appearance known. Like you, like D said, they're dunking on Chicago PD, and apparently Golden Boy Murphy is the only one to thwart them. And they're like, all right, we gotta get this dude out of pocket because this is this making us sweat a little bit. Hanging out the window, <laughs> take it out the window, Chow Young fat style with two <laughs> dual guns. Blup 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 blup. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, his partners are getting their Taurus and shot up the shit. And apparently, Lewis and Murphy are like the perfect like Miami Vice partners because they're taking the gangs down. I was like, well, that hey, happened. Yo, I, I appreciate this movie because I appreciate this movie for one reason. They didn't give Lewis the motherfucking sneeze guard until the second movie. So I kind of appreciate well, the first really, movie. really, really the third movie because the second movie, at least she was capable and did some shit. Like, yeah, the third movie? Oh, my God, man. She, I, I, heard, I heard she was pissed about that third movie. We'll get to that, though. But. I, I mean, everybody, I mean, first everybody of all, first of all, like, first yeah, of all, yeah, we are, we are not talking about the third movie right now. No, no, no first not of yet. all, wouldn't you, if, if, if you read the script and you got to page five, I'd be mad, too. <laughs> you said page five? That was page two, sir. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Five is when yeah, Robo Robo hey, Robo Chris, fights the ninja we're talking about. Hey Chris, now see we say that. Here's CTA's pounder. I thought it was all right. I'm sorry. I thought it was fine. <laughs> first I off it was fine. First off, D you know, CTH Pounder paid her house off with Robocop 3. I think we can oh, all you agree. Know she that. Did. You know she did. That was what look, when she got the phone call, that was one that was the one where you know black women do this move. Thank you. Thank you. Hang up. Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> Like, Mama, what happened? I'm going to get you them Jordans. Actually, you know what? No, we got to pay the house off first. That's more important. That's <laughs> way more important. Let's get the house done. Oh, man. But, like, but Mama, is- but Mama, <laughs> they don't want no naughty head, dark-skinned woman on television, on, on movies. I said the same thing. But it's about to change. Shit is about to change. Loretta Devine told me. You don't know Loretta. Yeah, I, I don't know her. But, <laughs> <laughs> but also, too, we also have to also uh, give a shout-out to... Uh, Robert Doki as the uh, police sergeant. He's another one that was in all three movies. He and is. 
I love them. Even eighties movies, man. I love like them. one of the Chris. I'm going. I'm. I keep on mentioning this movie so I can remember. We're going to do Mercenary Fighters one day. Mercenary mm-hmm. Fighters is basically Avatar, except it has um, Rep Brown and Ron O'Neill in it. <laughs> and, well, and, my dick's hard. Yeah, I'm just saying, right? And, uh, <laughs> Boston, uh, not Peter. Yeah, Peter Fonda is in the movie too. And um, God, but he, but uh, homeboy, the chief, he plays the African warlord that's obviously corrupt. And Chris, real talk, love this dude to death. He is. He has one of the most. You remember when we heard Delroy Lindo in Congo? We were like, Stop nigga, why you sound like that? Dick. That yeah, that yeah. Yeah, he has the same type of African thing. Was like where they try to roll their R's way too much. It's like, oh, dog, God. Stop. stop. You are fr- like, dog. You are obviously from Ohio. Stop <laughs> talking. <laughs> but you know what though? I like his Sergeant Reed because he's yes, he he's he's in the he's a character that's in a position where he has to deal with OCP taking over the police department. But he's trying to put on the face of like I'm the head of the police department. We're gonna have some fucking order in this police department by any means well, necessary. Well, well, the trope, also crack the, era. Also crack era. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the trope, the trope of the like overly angry, you know, black chief. It's all. It's almost always a chief. Like this. This is where it sort of skews that trope a little bit by making him a sergeant, not yeah. like the chief. But um. But his he play he ta- plays that role to fucking perfection. You know, uh, like he, like, and the best part is that he, he, it's not even that he just has angry moments all the time. You know, um, he's not like the fucking chief from like last action hero, you know, where he's just, um, <laughs> on, on the bur- oh, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, he's you know, Lieutenant Decker. Yeah. You know, he's, he, he's has moments that are like real. He has moments that are funny. You know, like like when the woman walks up to him at the beginning and like, you know, he's like, oh, not now. You know, <laughs> she, she like walks away. You know, it's just it's just funny little stupid moments like that. You know? you know, the other thing that you know, the other thing that solidifies his role as sergeant, that wonderful late 80s mustache. Oh, Man, that, must- that shit was perfect. Perfect. Oh, that's perfection. Perfection. I mean, you need that. But um, that says I'm in a position of authority in a full blown out mustache hey and he was still keeping that hair on tack you know he had the uh jefferson you know or <laughs> jefferson look to him a little bit it was, it was getting there it was getting there yeah that hairline that hairline was doing the michael jackson <laughs> lean back <laughs> it was a little like by the third by the like third move, by the third movie it's like, like hey dog just give that shit up man just 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 give it up just, just give it up but um now here's the thing um Murphy and Lewis, they, they cornered the gang at the steel mill, and that's where Murphy meets his maker. And it is like the most... I could, it's like, yo, I, hey guys, just shoot me in the head now. I don't want to go through this torture. I don't. They shoot... I mean, mean, uh, oh my god. These guys, these, guys, these guys pull in... I mean, these guys show up with real problem solver shotguns. Hong Kong shotguns. I mean, <laughs> I, I hate... Look, Mo, this is not me shitting on your favorite movie, but... Every time I see that scene, it looks wackier and wackier <laughs> and wackier. They shoot him in the head, and Murphy is like not even in shock. He's just like, uh, 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 like when he's, he's like, he, Wait, no, the I best part about it is he gets I'm lit up. His I'm, arm go, his I'm arm stop. goes flying back. And he's just, ah, oh. I'm, I'm like, stopping. niggas, breathe. Look, listen, I'm stopping the both of y'all right now because these were probably some of the best Kurtwood Smith lines to come from this movie. Not even that one. Hold on. Not even just that one. It was the moment he starts talking. My man walks up to him and says, I got a problem. Cops don't like me, and I don't like cops. Then he does the whole nene 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 well, then they shoot him. No, they shot him in the knee first. They, they, the they shot him in the knee. They shot him in the knee first off. They shot, yeah, him, in the shot him in the knee. They shot him in the knee. Then after they had pinned him down, my man point blank shotgun aimed at his hand, blew it off, and yes, yeah, somebody had to make the joke. Give the guy a hand. Look, look, mm. look! You laugh at that pun. That was Kurtwood Smith. You oh no, no! Don't get me wrong. Pun. Don't get me wrong. It's Kurtwood Smith. I'm laughing at everything he says. <laughs> because not only do I know for not no D not only do I know for a fact that he is having probably the most fun out of everybody in this movie, <laughs> I believe all the lines he's saying 
that they were not done in one take. I believe it weren't. I believe they I weren't. Mean, and he can... I'm just still stuck. I'm just still stuck on the fact that that nigga hit him with the caddy shack. I mean, which is still the funniest line ever. Like, my man, the one with the ball. Be the ball. Be one with the ball. No, hold on. Not only that, did you guys notice that when they decided to unload him, uh, it's like forget the hand. That whole arm came off. I mean, his body was like Swiss cheese. Like, it depends on which version of Robocop you're watching. Because if you're watching, like, the TBS version and stuff, I'm putting TBS in quotes there because it was on every... I think Turner had rights to Robocop, if I remember correctly, at one point. I don't remember. Broadcast it. I remember it being on TNT and TBS at the time. But anyways, like, you see that scene? They, sh- they kind of jump cut that scene. But oh, they, they didn't, super they didn't, jump, Yeah, right. they didn't really show the full thing. But then when you buy, like, the, well, I got the Blu-ray of Robocop, they show the full thing, like... Did you see the eight? Wait, hold on, CJ. Do you have the quote unquote ultra rare uncut version of it where it shows more of his bloody stump I of a downloaded hand that version? Okay. Back the, during um, our, back during our the, Deviant, Deviant was, what was the name? De- Demonoid Days? I downloaded that version. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, the, uh, the Criterion disc has all of the, uh, all of the stuff they cut out. Um, and, and I I have that. That's that's yeah. It's I mean like honestly, it, you don't even fucking notice. Like if you're watching the regular version versus the quote unquote uncut version, it doesn't really seem that different. Like two the two big ba- longer. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a couple of seconds longer, honestly. And like the two big scenes that you really notice a difference in are when Ed two oh nine glitches out and shoots whatever that fucking guy's name is. Oh, yeah, because well, we see... And, uh, we and see the, the killing... Swiss cheese. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the killing of Murphy. Well, because, you know, like, uh, Verhoeven, like, when they were packing that guy with squibs, like, Verhoeven was obsessed with the idea of more blood, more blood, more blood. <laughs> so, like, they, they, were, they were literally strapping Ziploc bags filled with blood to this guy. Jeez. And, yeah, and so his... So, like, when he squibbed... It was just fucking. Blah, 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 but side note, you side, know. side note for real quick about that dude. And this is something. This is a nitpicky thing, and I'm pretty sure all three of y'all might laugh at this. Hey, my man, you put the gun down, right? You have 15 seconds. Run underneath Ed Two Eyes' leg and get the fuck out of there. Right? I'm with you. I'm with you. That, that I would have ran out the room. Or now, hold the CEO. now hold on. Or, now hold on. Or now. just. I'm just saying, hide behind the CEO. I got a question. I'm that asshole. I'm I got a question. I am that asshole. I got a question. CJ, you say that. But when you hear the robotic sounds of that baritone coming out of Ed 209 with the with two freaking 50 cal machine guns pointed at you, do you really think throwing the gun down is go, is running through your mind at that point? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, put I yourself mean, in his shoes. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't know. I don't know errors. I don't know, but I know when you get shot, if you got shot by Ed 209, this is what they'll say when they go to your body. He had a fucking hero sandwich. Well, <laughs> I would accept that. I would accept <laughs> that. Hey, speaking of which. Um, oh, you know, look, hey, you know, Ed 209 was like, do not worry. Sprinkle some crack on him. <laughs> He's not black, Ed. He's not black, Ed. Oh, you have oh sorry. Sorry. Sprinkle some coke on him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, exactly. Sprinkle some come coke. Come on, he's a party. He wasn't doing nothing illegal. He was just he partying. did not comply. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of which, um, so I like how Dick Jones. You could just see the visuals of him jerking off when Murphy comes in there for the RoboCop program. I'm like, yo, Dick, put put your dick away. You know, look, just <laughs> like, yo, dog. It's a dead man. I get it. It's your RoboCop program, but yo. Again, I like Miguel Ferreira. He plays it up like, oh my gosh, Robocop is happening. You might as well, you've been Bob. You've been yeah, Bob. You, said, yeah. I, you were talking about Morgan. I, you said Dick Jones. I'm like, I got real confused there for a second. No, 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 not Dick Jones. Um, um, Morton. Morton is like, has a hard on when like Murphy goes yeah, in yeah. there. He <laughs> says the best line in the movie to me. He does fuck. say one of the best lines in the movie, though. You're going to be the bad motherfucker <laughs> that sounds like a, something a coked up white dude would say i'm sorry i mean first oh, of all yeah, you yeah. can already <laughs> you can already tell that he you can already tell that dude literally had an erection that was about to sprout out of his chest oh, God, oh, this guy right. has a family man it's like chill for a second 
<laughs> no, because he knows this plan is gonna work. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, thing. hey, look, he, hey, that's that is a guy that's sure of himself, and I like the whole. Honestly, the big thing with Morton is he's just like anytime he sees RoboCop, all he's thinking about is snow, sn- snorting coke off of a hooker's chest. So I mean, I mean, wouldn't you? It's well, I mean, 19- yeah, obviously. I mean, it's 1987. You're like you're an executive who honestly, thanks to this, uh, thanks to this, I mean, thanks to this successful program, right. you're about to go up to the top. But you're about to be yeah, right there and, next and to the that, old man. And that's what made that scene between him and Dick Jones, Morton and Jones in the bathroom, fucking hilarious. Because I think Morton <laughs> knew Dick was in the bathroom, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." Dick is old news. I'm I'm the new hotness, you know, blah blah blah. And I'm like, "Oh, you did that shit on purpose, dog." Yo, <laughs> and the best part about it, what does Dick say about that? He's, you know, I used to I used to talk behind the old man's back. I even once called him what was the line? I, I once called him an asshole, asshole. or something. <laughs> yeah, I called him an asshole. But we have respect. I'm like. D- Really? Like I would have gone. I would have gone. No, no, I would have accepted. Ever. I would have accepted the old nickname he went the, that he tried to call him Iron Butt. <laughs> Iron Butt. <laughs> oh man, yo, I got a fourth grader that will fucking murder you when it comes to these words, though. Come on, Iron Butt. That's the best you got. Hey, he's an old. A, he's an old white dude. Give him some credit. He's an old white <laughs> dude, and it's an '80s joke. Yeah. Yo, but the best thing about that whole scene was the fact that all these other see all the other guys in the bathroom just cleared it out because they knew Dick was in there taking a shit. <laughs> and, and when he walked out and walked up behind him, if that was me, if I was Bob, I would have been like, "So, um, you want to be br- stop breathing on my neck? You want you like it's like eight there's like eight faucets in here, man. You why well, you got to be behind me? <laughs> and I like how." And I know the best part was when he about to tell Dick off, Dick grabbed this nigga by the back of the head. I was like, yo! He no, the but fuck here's the like- kicker. Here's the kicker. My boy Johnson was looking at Bob like, hey, dog, Jones ain't going to like this shit. And I like how Bob off the break was like, yo, fuck Jones, man. That dude fucked me and I picked it up. Actually, I've got a really good behind-the-scenes story on that scene as well. So Ronnie Cox made the suggestion to grab Miguel Ferrer's hair. During that scene, and he stomped that idea big time. He's like, do not do that. Like, do not fucking touch me, you know. And so Paul Verhoeven was like, I like that idea. Don't tell him. Just fucking do it. You know, (laughs) (laughs) Um, so so like the rage in Bob Morton's face when that scene had that's fucking real. Like he was he almost quit the movie. He was so pissed off about that scene. Yeah, wow. and, hey, or at hey. least that's what that's what legend says. Honestly, you're you're in a movie this this fucking big, you don't fucking quit it, especially if you're in such a big role. But um, yeah, he was. Hey Mo, you know what, hey, he bro, was he was hey, pissed. Mo, hey Mo, there is. I love one, it when. Hold on, hey Mo, there's actually a good side to this. At least the both of them wash their hands. Yeah, right. You know, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, you don't but, you don't want to you don't want you don't want shitty hand fucking <laughs> running through your fingers I mean, right, running through right, your right, hair. Granted, that would be on brand for Dick Jones if he didn't wash his hands and just grabbed his head like that. I mean, just saying. <laughs> yeah, have, fun, I mean, have fun washing my like, shit out of your hair, kid. I always <laughs> like it when directors do that shit, when directors and performers do that shit. Like, one of my favorite favorite things of a performer doing that was actually Macho Man. Macho Man knew that Hulk Hogan hated getting poked in, like, a certain part of his chest. And mm. one skit, Macho Man was going full on Macho Man, like, oh, you think you're going to do something? Do something about it. Every time he, he kept poking him, poking him. And Hogan kept on getting mad at Hogan because back then it was the 80s and the steroids and the coke was in the way before uh-huh. we get to his brain. He was like, you're like, look, what you say? What you say? And his head like, oh, he's fucking with me. Mm. Cool. Let's make this thing good. Nah, here's the <laughs> I thing. Like that, that, here's the thing. Um, Actually, I got, I got one for you like that, too. It's funny. Take director for I mean, have the directors tell the actor to do something. Um, you know a famous line for that? What's uh, this And this will actually be for you, Mo. Oh. Uh, the Terminator, uh-huh. the line, I'll be back. Right. Schwarzenegger did not want to say it that way. 
Mm. Yeah, he actually he did. said that recently on a. Um, he was. Yeah, he, I think Schwarzenegger not, was talking about his recent movies that he did over the years, and he said mentioned that. Yeah, he said uh, he mentioned that he did not. Yeah, want, what what did he originally want to say, or or was it that that was his, I'll be back was his ad lib, or no, 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 no. That's what. Oh, no, okay. What did he want to say? It wasn't his ad lib at all. Like he did not. First of all, he didn't even like the line. He just said, you know, it just seems so out of the character of the Terminator for him to say, I'll be back. You know, he believes he should say, I'll be right back. And James Cameron, both him and James went back and forth until James hit the wall and said, read the effing line. (laughs) He said, trust me, it's going to work. It's going to sell. This is going to be the best line in the movie. Yeah, it's did one it. of. It's one of, if not the best line in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> he did it, and sure yeah. enough, that line sold. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, and it became like his fucking staple. Like he's. It did. Like how, how many fucking movies did did Arnie say "I'll be back" in after that? You know, multiple movies. Almost all multiple. of them. Yeah. All of them. I think, I want to say nearly all of them. Now, Robocop has three directives. Uh, protect the serve. Well, four. no, I'm getting that. I'm getting to that one. Serve the pub, serve the public. <laughs> Protect the innocent and uphold the law. There's a fourth prime directive that basically makes it to where he can't arrest a he can't arrest like a high end like person. he can't yeah yeah he not no executive officer in, in like he the can't company, arrest yeah. he can't arrest the old man he can't arrest no. Bob he can't touch Dick you know he, <laughs> he can't touch Don <laughs> phrasing man phrasing <laughs> phrasing he can't touch Dick Jones he touch and he can't Dick. touch Donald Johnson any higher ups in OCP which makes sense because yeah. he's OCP property. You know, um, Yo, I like how you said that, Chris, because when you said all those directives, he can't touch dick. He, when you say he can't touch dick, here's me. Um, he's a robot and he has a choice. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, like, listen. I, I don't care what you get down with. Just remember that consent is sexy. OK, yeah, that's all. Clearly, clearly. <laughs> um, so as per typical of these movies, when Murphy's Robocop. Of course, he starts to remember, has his old memories start flooding back little by little. And it makes it a bit creepy to an extent because he's remembering all the, the, you know, he's remembering his life with his kid and his wife, particularly with his wife and all that stuff. And it's like, oh, shit. I have something to tell you. Yeah. I love you. (laughs) I hate, I hate the performance of his wife so much in this movie. I hate it. She is such a bad actress. And then they play one of her worst lines. Oh, <laughs> and, oh, and, and, oh, and you're just sitting there like, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what I have something to tell you. I love you. Shut you know, up. That, that is the first, you know what, Mo? You are the first person that I've heard who talks about this movie to mention that that is the one thing you hated. <laughs> yeah, no, I love, I love almost everything about RoboCop. I fucking- <laughs> hate his wife like i murphy's <sighs> wife is the worst she had the you know what she had a very thankless job if you really think about it it's just like she's there as the wife she had, she had to suck his robo dick so what do you expect you well, know? Doesn't, she had, he doesn't have a robo all, dick Mur- first of all first of all she has the first of all she had the easiest role in the movie and they shot one thing and just used it over and over again yep <sighs> i'm mad that she came back for the third movie by the way that i, I was so you mean the was, second no she was in the third one I believe she, she was where? Yeah, for, where? for a hot second. <laughs> but she was Actually, in the third no, one. you're saying where, Eris. You're saying where. Here's me. Why? Exactly. <laughs> Had to pay the bill somehow. But here's the thing. I love it because Robocop is clearly flexing as we, we saw. He's doing just badass stuff, you know. He's doing a spinning of the gun, and Lewis is like, Murphy. It's you. And I'm like, okay. That's, that's another <laughs> fucking shitty line to Nick, too. Yeah. It is. It's yeah. really <laughs> and that, that one really makes me hurt, too, because Nancy Allen's a really good with actress. The, with the, with like, the, that's just a really fucking shitty line reading. The Spike Lee close-up face when she yeah. says it to it, I was Where's, like, oh, you're, it's you. It's you. <laughs> Paul, look, Paul, you know Paul Verhoeven was like this. <sighs> that's the eighth time. Fuck it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm not doing this fucking line no more. It's already 5.30. We're losing light. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, and also, just before we continue on and stuff, when they were doing the whole thing of building Corolla Cop and stuff, 
I, I like the idea of them showing them, you know, booting up the software and stuff. And I was like, so this is like Windows, early Windows, before Windows. Is that, is that where we're at right now? All right, cool. Yeah. yeah. That, or Apple. Is that? Well, I mean, <laughs> they, they do something. They do something really cool, too. Like, they reveal RoboCop almost like, you know, like as if it were a monster movie. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like they, they never show a full body shot uh, from the front. Yeah. Until, I mean. Until he like, gets his car. Until he gets in, well, I think it's until he gets to his seat. Yeah. You know, but but either way, it's like like so they have you hear the thunk, thunk, thunk yeah. you know, like you hear the footsteps, the you know, you you hear the mechanical sounds, you know, you 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 see him through like glass, and then you get that one little fucking glimpse of him from behind with that fucking superb rubber ass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. And, and the fun, the funniest thing about that whole thing is that like that was all practical. Like that wasn't a like the, they had to do it that way because like Peter Weller could could almost never wear the full suit. Nope. You know that like there's so many every single moment in that film where you see him in a full suit, you can see gaskets falling out of places. Mm-hmm. You can see like even that one fucking shot from behind, you can see the gasket falling out of his fucking leg from mm-hmm. the rubber piece. You know. Yeah, I mean, like any, anytime he's in a car, he's only wearing the top half. You know, like they did everything in the power to make him not have to wear the whole fucking suit because it was basically i think it like weighed as much as he did you know i mean it's it's like trying to put rdj in the iron man suit i think they did it one time in iron man one and then it was like all right we gotta find a better way to do this shit because we can't have this dude in a full iron man suit it's not it's not practical in the way that we could you know but i mean it makes perfect sense can can i that's a good question but I have a real quick question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eris, but um, Mo, I do got a question. Sure. With, with, with all the fucking movement in that suit from Peter Weller, was that really him doing all those ro- just the yeah. robotic hip Absolutely. movement and all One, that? One hundred percent him. Yeah. He. Yeah, that's awesome. Like it was, it was one of two reasons for that. A, he wanted to look like a fucking robot when he walked around. But B, the suit was so janky and so like cumbersome to wear that like he kind of had to move like that because it was the only way to really sell sell the costume. You know, yeah. like if, so he, if he, like, he didn't so move it was like, like Michael Keaton. Fuck- like okay. it was what? I was just gonna say the ba- uh, the eighty nine Batman costume. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very similar to the eighty nine Batman costume, except that, that one was hard rubber and this is like fucking metal <laughs> with custom, you know? with custom now, Nikes. Um, now can I now can I point out something? A D, this is something that that have always hit me about RoboCop, and I would say it's hit me more so in my teen years um, than when I saw this movie as a kid. I believe Akira Toriyama was a fan of this movie because we get that same similar sound effect when we see Cell walking. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I think we talked about this. Here, at, we no, talk- here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I will believe that. I will believe that. But I will also. But I also know that Japanese um, um, sound directors, they really love our movies. They do, so, and I really think that somebody, oh, yeah. somebody at Bird Studio was a fan of RoboCop. Oh said, yeah, because that ain't come for Toei. That I mean, ain't come for Toei. You know that. I game mean, let's be real too. I mean, let's be real too and stuff. We talked about that during the Cell Saga. They clearly love Terminator because I swear to you, the idea of what Cell was doing absorbing everybody and krillin trying to save people and shit like that was some terminator robocop shit it's like oh you can hit. it was it was so surreal yes yeah, so clearly they do you know clearly um so murphy's out here he got the full police database in his head he's going after gang members and once lewis kind of reminds him and stuff he goes back to his house it's abandoned because clearly murphy's dead and you know family kind of moved on and stuff um which Again, you get sad RoboCop for a hot second. All right, you know. It's like I no, we get the line. I'm we, so depressed. No, no, Burp. no. no Burp. Burp. <laughs> wait, Bo. Wait. It's <laughs> my impression. It's my I know, impression. I know, but this line did kind of hit. I feel them, but I don't remember them. Oh. I'm like, <laughs> how my like, movie? Stop. Sad little RoboCop. <laughs> this introspective RoboCop. Now he has deep thoughts. <laughs> deep thought. Know. I thought that was an IBM computer. <laughs> yeah. 
But now hold on, before because you did kind of jump ahead a little bit there, CJ. Uh, let's let's for, let's not forget about his very first assignment. He shot through a woman's dress and, and made a guy really, really have second thoughts about getting that vasectomy. Oh, oh my god! Can we, talk about this? Can we talk about this scene for a second? Yes. yes, we need to talk about this fucking scene for a second. Yeah. Like, I don't want to talk about the RoboCop version of the scene. I want to talk about the our RoboCop remake version of this scene, <laughs> which is. Which, by the way, I don't know if we're actually planning on talking about that one as well. We should, but um, oh, we will. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to give too much. Oh away, yeah, we are. Are are we okay? But I I have to tell you, like this is like there's there's plenty of of moments in the Hour RoboCop remake that I don't particularly care for because some of them get a little too trippy for my liking. But that scene is such utter weird perfection that i fucking love it just like rows and rows of naked men (laughs) you know running at robocop as he shoots their cocks off like it's fucking brilliant (laughs) it's just fucking brilliant (laughs) (laughs) oh let's talk about another bad performance too the fucking guy with uh, she's got more hair down there fuck you dude the, <laughs> the worst fucking line reading no, no, no but here's my thing the, the part that really got me was like okay so he likes it hairy what, what? <laughs> is that what the conclusion came to okay yeah, all i right. think that's what the conclusion is like ah uh, like i bet she got a hairy pussy too like okay dude yeah i was gonna say it's I mean, 1980 it's I mean, 1980 whatever of course she does Ain't nobody like boat down there nothing like that i mean there's always been you know people who shaved but yeah for the most part the you know the the large bush was still very much in fashion at the time in fashion (laughs) of course it was of course it was i'm just saying we got to see the good guy shoot off somebody's penis yes well we didn't see the penis we just saw a blood shot in it we just no 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 chris chris we get to see two dicks get off in this movie you didn't do it like homeboy hey, hold on hold on hold on eris did you boo me i did not i laughed oh, i thought you boo me <laughs> you i thought you did because i was going look <laughs> say, you boo me, here's it hey for real talk eris if you boo me i would have been saying see see eris gets it He's my best friend. <laughs> See, I thought she, he she knows what to do when did, I make a bad joke. She did like homeboy from Harvey Birdman. Dick! Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> ha-ha! Penis! <laughs> actually, I, I, actually, I... Boo Earns. Oh, God, Mo. No, <laughs> D, D, I... Look, I quietly laughed and gave you the Batman thumbs up. <laughs> the Batman thumbs up. Hold on, which one? The one from Dawn of Justice where he's thumbs up while Wonder Woman yes, and um, Superman are fighting one. Doomsday. That, that <laughs> it's just like, y'all got this shit. I don't got it. <laughs> oh, man. that was, Hey, Chris, that was a pure, yeah, y'all be with Jesus. See you. I have no stake in this fight. <laughs> y'all got this I'm, shit right. I'm just going to hang back with this sniper rifle and wait for my moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is my wife. No bullshit. We watched that movie, the movie theater. Every time Ben Affleck did something good, she kicked the rail in front of us. Every time he did something bad, here's my asshole wife. Because you a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know? No, let me tell you something. My wife loves Batman. For her to say that at her favorite superhero, that takes hate. It took Ben Affleck for my wife to curse out Batman. Amazing. <laughs> now, I'll say this, though, man. I I love uh, Paul McCrane. When he rolls up to that fucking gas station, it looks like a Texaco, but I don't think it was a Texaco. But anyways. No, that wasn't a Texaco. That was a uh, cadden fodder. Anyway. <laughs> anyways, I like how my man, I like how my man. Running the gas You're station. You're a college is- boy? Yo, Can guess what was me Yo, here's what had me rolling about the scene. They took the time to show he's from college. He has the fucking, what was the, the compass bullshit that we had in It was, school. uh, yeah, he was doing plain geometry. I was like, dude, I don't even think we did that shit in fucking high school. I'm like, who, who still uses this? <laughs> who uses this? Who does this now? You know, the the irony is that, like, is that the exact same textbook he was using my father had. 
you know so like we it was on a it was, I, like i remember very clearly that that exact textbook was on a bookshelf in my house and it like <laughs> I used to always, I used to always laugh. I'd like hold it up and like press it up against the window, and like nobody ever knew what the fuck I was talking about. But, <laughs> Dude, but Paul McCray, you know. he's just get, he's like, hey, I did that for myself. No one else. I did that for myself. No one else. Dude, that that actually describes about ninety seven percent of the jokes I did as a kid. Was, like <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to make anybody laugh but me. Dude, but <laughs> That's actually, is- you know what, Mo? I can see that be your go-to defense. Like when it's like, Mo, explain yourself. You just pick up the book and hold it. <laughs> <laughs> like I like how McCrane is like just giving this dude so much shit for being smart. Like, oh, you're a college boy, huh? Yeah, run that fucking money, son, run it right now. And also it's put a uh, out- <laughs> I'm a good shot. I'm a good shot. I can hit you from here. Yeah, put thirty on number three and give me all that money. <laughs> can you oh, outsmart? Yeah, man, can you outsmart you a bullet? <laughs> Hey Chris, and while you at it, let me get like them, let me get them two wide owls. No, 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 natural. There you go. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> if he was see, for, like CD, if it was a like if, it, if this was a black guy robbing him, he'd ask for the two crown royal bags in the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you know what? You know that's that that is and part of my part of my n word on this one. That is the most nigga thing you have. You always go. See, Chris goes for Hennessy. I go for I go for E and J. Yours is Crown Royal. <laughs> See, Crown Royal is the only thing that's respectable out of the out of the three I just said. <laughs> you got to pick a cheaper one now, man. <laughs> <laughs> got to go like fuck it. You got to go like uh, Paul Masson or some shit like that. Paul Masson, man. Paul so just... <laughs> See, I guess I, I, I guess this just goes show, goes to show how fucking white I am. I'd just be like, "Where's no, no. The, where's the Thunderbird?" You know, Thunderbird. Thunderbird is made for old black dudes, man. Oh, no. that's true. That's no, true. First but, of all, first of all, I feel ashamed that I expected you to say that, Mo. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Chris. Uh-huh. Hey, Chris. He need to say Christian Brothers. Bruh. Man. What I need to say with some yeah. kind of what. Was some Tenafly Viper. <laughs> Christian Brothers VSOP. Yeah. You can't got to do it big. They Come just, on now. Uh, Come on uh, now. Don't, don't, tell me I, don't, don't tell me I just made a reference you guys didn't get. That's that's sad. It went over our heads. So just, it's street street trash. Street trash. Um, now, here's the thing. Uh, I like how RoboCop, again, Wait. he's a he's a robot. He's just driving casually. It's like, oh, robbery. I think I'm going to U-turn over here. And, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out. And he does and Murphy doesn't give a shit. He's unloading a gun in a gas station. He just says, fuck it. If I gotta do it, I gotta do it. Yeah, he's fucking reckless. I mean, like, <laughs> like, no joke. Like, you think the Ed 209 had had its issues, you know. Once they worked those issues out, he would only fire at people who fucking deserved it. Yeah, you exactly. know. Or people he was programmed to shoot, you know, like black people in Robocops. Yeah. But um Clearly. I heard that. I heard that. Thank you for that, Mo. Real. See that? See that? See that white people? He got he was brave enough. Now yeah. excuse uh, us while we kick his ass. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm I'm as the kids would say, woke. Um <laughs> <laughs> he's a white ally, guys. He's a white, a white ally. ally. White I, I hate I hate that term so much. I hate that term so <laughs> But because white people say that about us, Chris. They do. Oh, he's a black. He's a black. <laughs> like on, honestly, I don't. I mean, my, here, here's my here's my whole opinion with that thing. I treat everybody with the same amount of disdain and fucking <clears throat> obno- you know, and obnoxious fucking hatred as I would anybody else. Well, so like opportunity hating. I like yeah, that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like like you you have to understand that like, that I don't give a fuck what color your skin is or what your race is or what your gender is or what your religion is. I hate you until you prove <laughs> until you prove to me that I, that you're okay. You know what? Here's the sick part, and I tell this to a lot of people. A lot of people think like that, but they are so they don't trust nobody. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, I, that, that's where, that's where I'm, I'm happy with, with how I handle it is I'm usually actually pretty good about like, you know, allowing people to prove to me that they're okay. 
you know, but yeah, that those first couple of weeks of, of me knowing somebody like whenever I meet somebody new, like I'm very like standoffish and like very introverted until like they say, they have to say something that like sort of like triggers something in my head. They're like, Oh, they might be, they might actually be pretty see, cool. Like see, they'll make a fucking movie reference. See, or something see this else. is why D, D see, this is why D introduced me like geeks to Mo first. Cause D knows how to like trigger Mo for within the first two days. <laughs> Mo followed us on Twitter off break. I was like, well, that was quick <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I was, uh, yeah. Man the name quick. was the name was red brown you know mm-hmm. about him <laughs> please do tell <laughs> sir red brown you know I, 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 I believe i believe red brown was the uh the introduction you know <laughs> Uh, where, where, and, where it became friends like oh did you, you want to know the sad part mo we well, have yet to do a red brown movie yeah we haven't i mean like come on I'm, I'm a, look, I need I need to go ahead and do it. I haven't done it yet, but whatever, whatever. Anyway. But anyways, uh, my man literally off break sat there and did the freak out. We killed you, man. We killed you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real talk. Um, I have to say the quality of the Blu- Blu-ray is gorgeous. Yep. This I, whole I got- movie looks so good in Blu-ray. Oh, man. He's All right, I got, a, I got a question. I got a question. This is relevant to the movie. So everybody, shut up and listen to me for a second, because right, 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 white right. white man talking. Let let me let me speak. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. my god, I, I couldn't even I couldn't man, even look, get through that with a straight fucking y'all, face. All y'all, listen, all y'all, that ain't here. all y'all need to shut up. Got a white man here talking. About all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Out of, out of, out of, all right, guys, 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 all right, 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 for reals, out of all of the guys (laughs) in the gang, who do you think made it, got it, well, let's, let's, let's eliminate, eliminate Emil from that, because he's clearly the answer to this question, okay, but who do you think, who do you think got it the worst out of all, ooh, yes, he did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. He yeah. probably. Yeah, he did. He got, he got blown up, man. That's, he got that's, blown up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Black man just got shot. It's like, oh. But man. I mean, but I mean, Kurtwood Smith gets a fucking spike to the. That's a great moment too when he gets death. that, oh, see, that yeah. spike no, 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 to the no, neck. No, hold on, hold on. Who got it the worst? It's hands down is Ray Wise. Who had the most satisfying kill? Mm. Oh, Kurtwood Smith. Uh, because yeah. you were happy to see nah, him go. Nah, I was Mine. satisfied. Mines was the um, mines was the um, toxic waste dude because he just went. Well, I, yeah, that's, he, but that's what I said. I I, I specifically said, said yeah, said we're cutting nope. him out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Emil uh, is yeah. really the answer to that question, but I, I was thinking well, of like, no, no. Eris is right. It's Ray Wise. Yeah, Wise. I think the black dude. Eris I think right. black dude got the lesser of. He just got shot, and it's like, oh, well, that was oh yeah, quick. yeah. He was in and out. It was in and yeah, out and done. I think uh, open and free and closing. Yeah, this it's is how you like, know that. Hold jump on, I'm in and and like 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 the couple lower end guys in there, like they nothing really particularly devastating happens, and they get shot or whatever. Who cares, you know? But yeah, Ray Wise, his death is fucking brutal. Kurtwood's is very like it's satisfying, very satisfying, without a doubt. But it, but, uh, mm-hmm. but fuck me, man! Like a meal, like that. That's like first off, the makeup effects in that scene are amazing, uh-huh. and like the way he explodes like a goddamn water balloon when he gets hit by the car is just—it's brutal. You know, what makes it great? you know what makes it better is that his clothes disappear when it happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean the toxic waste does whatever it wants. It makes your hold clothes on. disappear. Hold on, hold on. Not only did his clothes disappear, I'm gonna go ahead and pull a very, very lame uh, Dane Cook joke. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed his shoes didn't fly off when he got hit by the car. I mean, his shoes melted into his body when he got the toxic waste dumped on him. So you know, yo, uh, he was, he, he had the Nike sign floated up to his chest already. <laughs> <laughs> now here's the thing. Um, I believe at this point, this is where Dick Jones is looking at freaking uh, um, Clarence like. Hey, uh, so you might want to take Morton out because uh, clearly Robocop might be coming on to me. And um, I don't know whether it was either Yusu or D that said this, but um, yeah, Morton was in a coke filled uh, celebration snorting coke off these chicks' breasts. Clearly, he had to. Have. Again, again, hey, if I was, right, if I was a, 
bitches leave. If yes. I was a high level executive in the late eighties, I would have been doing yeah, the same little, thing. Yeah, this little Miami Vice uh, shirt on too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris. Okay, I got a question. Yeah. What eighties? Mm-hmm. What eighties? Song is playing in the background. Hugh, and it has to be black music. Oh, I'm no, gonna say Hugh it has Lewis to be the black news. music oh. in the eight. What is being played in the background? <sighs> you rock, ding, ding, straight, straight, he rockin' on. Yeah. <laughs> that's you know it's oh, Come on, <laughs> come on, it's eighty. It's, it's eighty-seven, dude. That's playing in the background while he's snorting the coke. That's that's. Hey, you know what, Chris? <laughs> I'm with you on that. That's the song. Thank you. Ooh, ooh, hold up! This was perfect. This was July, July oh, man. 17th of '87. Woo, yeah, that's perfect. It's perfect. He got the so we got he got so the Magnum P between, vest on. Hold on, Woo. you got hold on. I'm gonna say you got between June. I'm sorry, between January, January to about. Mm, I'm gonna say January to March of '87. What what black song was out that time? Oh my god! But like, yo, I like how you're, you're asking the wrong guy here. I I, know, I, don't. I don't listen. I don't listen to that Negro music. <laughs> <laughs> See, white people, you have to put the Negro. You, know you can't what? say nigger. Yeah, you can't exactly. say Negro. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? <sighs> Mo, I, I respect your honesty. <laughs> I respect it. Hey, look! Look! Look, what do you want him to do? Like, like what? Like he calls himself woke, but he don't know nothing about Prince. And here's Mo. I know about Prince. I, I was gonna say I know quite a bit about Prince, <laughs> but oh, he's white. He yeah, knows I, I, who I, Prince I, is. I, I, I almost feel because I've made I because it's been a while since I've been on the show, and I feel like I almost kind of like need to remind people that my ex is black and that both of my kids are half black. <laughs> so like, you know, uh, Mo is like Mo is I know, like I know I know that's that classic like I've got a black friend, you know, he's like, like so clearly notches, I'm not racist. He's but now, Mo, Mo, like, Mo, now, hold on, now, this is from me. Now, this is from me, Mo. Yeah, if you do that. That's when you lose them. <laughs> hey Mo, hey Mo, look at me, look at me. And I had to tell myself this. I'm pulling the classic. I can't be racist. I have a black friend. Now Mo, like this said, is what I also that, said. That's when you lose them. Hey, I know. Yo, but it's so funny coming from me. What? This is what I also say. Yeah. And I said this when um Chris told me he said, "Have you seen the all uh, that response?" Yeah, she said we're canceled. Uh huh. Fuck them. Exactly. <laughs> See, most statement was like, most statement was like two notches below homeboys from uh from Get Out, where he's like, I would have voted for Obama three times if I could. <laughs> I mean, I yo, I hate people that do that shit. Like, yo, fuck. No, no, no. I fucking love that shit. Like that shit is hilarious. <laughs> like, like there's nothing I find funnier than white guilt. You know, just like. <laughs> That had to be the funniest shit. I know Jordan Peele was cheesing his ass off when you wrote that line in that movie. Like, yo, I got to put this shit in this fucking movie. Fucker on top of that. So you know that he did that shit super intentionally and that he was sitting behind that director's chair the whole fucking time just cracking his ass up. <laughs> oh, my God. Dog, oh. and here's the kicker. Here's how, I, and this is why I like Ronnie Cox as Dick Jones. This dude, instead of just personally being, he's like, yo, fuck that dude. I'm going to send him a fucking video of myself that's recorded already, not even yeah. live, recorded on CD to play inside this dude's DVD player as he puts a bomb and dips. I'm like, wow. Exactly. He could have just sent Clarence to fucking go kill him, but no, no he's no. he tip recorded message. <laughs> Well, because it. that's not uh, yeah he sends a recorded message because that's not gonna backfire by the end of the movie <laughs> well, here's the even best better part about that oh the shit right there about that is this this shows you how much of a villain he is this is the reason why chris likes him the nigga took the time to sit down <laughs> and, <laughs> and record himself this is the reason why i'm fucking killing you <laughs> And you know that's that took like, and you know that shit took like ten takes for him to really get it, cause you know he had to laugh, cause he knows the motherfucker's gonna die anyway. So he, you know it took like, <laughs> and he got to time it right. <laughs> cause you know after he finished recording it, he's dying like this nigga's gonna die. Yes, that is a level of Bond villain right there. You have to be a certain level to be that type of bad guy. Damn it, the dick did it. 
He is good. Don't, we also forget, like him, and also man. forgetting, he puts the bomb on the table after he already shot Morton in the kneecaps. So yeah. it's like, you can't do anything. <laughs> Yo! Well, but but you know he had the plan. He had the plan because in the thing he goes by by now you're groveling on your knees. You know, <laughs> like he like he told them go in there, shoot the motherfucker in the kneecap. So he so he has to be down on the fucking ground. So he will have to look up to me while he's mm-hmm. watching me. You know, <laughs> no, I gotta go. And gotta and it. also, if he were to somehow survive because you shot him in the kneecaps, that would not be attempted murder. Nope. this is true. Yeah. Hey, yo, this is true. Well, well, the Here's the better part. I got a question. What if that came, like, now, what if he went with that plan and somehow Kurt Wood Smith slipped, I'm uh, putting it on CD, as he was walking out, slipped up, fell on the coffee table, breaks his neck, dies, and Miguel <laughs> Fierre is just looking at this motherfucker doing this whole skit. He's like, this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the bomb blows. Like, the, the, gr- the grenade goes off and Dick Jones is sitting in his office like, huh, Clarence was supposed to be here like five minutes ago. What the fuck's going on here? <laughs> And then you know what happens. At, well, you know what happens after that, right? When he when he says, "Huh, he's supposed to be back here about ten minutes ago," in comes in Sergeant Andrew Scott with his ear saying, "He can't hear you." <laughs> <laughs> Look at my face, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 I love the next scene where Murphy raids that cocaine factory and just kills every everybody. <laughs> Nobody is spared. Like at that point. Oh yeah, there was no no survivors. You couldn't even fake your death because Murphy would just blindly kill you. Like, yeah, you might be faking it. You are <laughs> still breathing. Let I, me take did, care of that. I did like how he was walking through. He was doing a whole bunch of no look shots. Bro, the no look shots are always fucking hilarious. I don't know who made who planned that in the script. I need to thank them because those no look shots are always funny. Now you know. Now if you notice him with the no look shots, Chris, he has to shoot enough people to build up his meter before he. <laughs> Before he can hit triangle, hit that <laughs> shot. Is this like that? Uh, what's the name of that child? What was the name of that child? Young fat game, D- uh, Ares. Oh, stranglehold. Oh, stranglehold. Yeah, thank you. Stranglehold. You, build yeah. your, you build up your meter. You can do like special move your gun because you're child young. Where fat. he like, where he literally spins around. He does the Matrix <laughs> lean spin and just and the fucking doves. Please tell me the doves. Please there is doves. doves. Yes, there is doves. Yeah, there is doves. Well, what he Let does is what he what he does is he does the matrix lean back right, and he spins shooting like shooting two like two pistols unloading both clips. Oh my look, god! Look, let awesome. me tell you something. Do you know how foolish you look when you miss time that shit and totally miss the um, <laughs> enemy and you're just stuck in that loop? <laughs> Yo, but here's the thing. Oh, God, I hated that game. Oh well, that that reminds me of like, and and I don't play this a lot, but I I played it enough. It like it reminds me of like when you're playing like Overwatch and you're playing as um, McCree. Oh, and you get, yeah, get your fucking hot. Yeah. yeah, you get your high noon off, and, you, and, and all of a sudden you just hear like you're you're sitting there and you're watching all these fucking guys. And you're saying to yourself, "I'm gonna get like fucking twelve kills right here." You know, and you go, "It's high noon," and every single motherfucker gets behind a goddamn rock before the fucking bullets go yeah. off, and you're like, <laughs> "Come on." It's like they know off the break. It's like, damn, did you really have to have him say his damn move before he shoots everybody? I, I, exactly. I mean, I guess, I guess, in for fairness' sake, you got to. He has to give him like a fucking minute to, you know, no, not a minute, but like a couple of seconds to potentially get away. Yeah. But the best, the best is where you have no idea where it's fucking coming from. Yeah. So you're just like, where do I hide? I don't know where he is. And then next thing you know, you're fucking dead. Oh man, but like he builds up, he kills everybody, and he leaves Clarence alive. He throws Clarence through a fucking glass window and shit. Clarence is like several, 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 Se- yeah. several, several of them and stuff. He's like, you don't understand. This guy I work with, he's higher up. It's Dick Jones. Dick Jones. I'm like, yo, yo. He's like, he snitched him he's out. Like, Dick Jones. It's Dick Jones. Dick Jones. Oh, like he works for OCP. OCP owes the cops. No, you, man. you're a cop. <laughs> The cops, he's 6'9". You're under arrest. <laughs> Yo, and, he was, and the best scene ever, and this is this is why I love the sergeant, brings Clarence in there, and the station's silent. Even the criminals are like, oh, shit. And they put him up on the table, and he's like, book him. He's like, on what charges? He's a cop killer. And I, lo- and I love how immediately Clarence, because he doesn't give a shit, just spits the blood on his shirt, and Sergeant Reed's like, shit, dude, what the fuck, man? Like, right. what, what like, are you doing? Just give me my phone call. Like, just give me my phone call. 
Yo, Sergeant Reed is just sitting there like, I should kill you more than Murphy already did, but you got rights. You got Miranda rights, clearly, all right? You know what? Fine, fine. I get another paper. We'll go with this. All right, I'll book you. So, I'm going to tell you one thing. You spit on this paper one more time, it's a wrap. Second off, I'm shoot, now hold on. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you and say you tripped and fell down the steps. Um, I'm going to slap the shit out of you. <laughs> Straight up. Just shoot the shit out of you. Do that again, nigga. I dare the you. The amount of blood <laughs> that came out of Clarence's mouth when he spit, I was like, dear God, man. It's just crazy. Yeah, um, it just makes you, you, it just makes you think of how long he had to hold that blood in his mouth to begin with. You know? I know. It's, it's... You're looking like you had an internal injury there. Now... The scene was. I mean, you know, you know, you know what, Chris. I mean, not Chris. Um, you know what, Eris, you would too if you had um a machine. You know, you know, with the with the fucking piston arms of you know just piston arms going at your face and shit. You know, crushing your brain and shit. You would be internally dead too. So good on him for even standing the fuck up. I don't know. What would you rather have? Would you rather have? Uh, would you rather take? You know. RoboCop's arm, like, smashing your face through a window, or would you have that same arm bash your head into an arcade machine and getting your hair pulled by that same <laughs> robot arm? Uh, whoa, 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 you know, whoa, 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 sir. He grabbed him by the nose. Oh, well, he did do that. Yeah, either did. way, it was just as bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, that's, look, that's look, either way, <laughs> Look, Eric, look, Eric, check this out. Either way, Proto Android 16 over here wow. is pretty fucked up. Okay. I love birds wow. and I love killing drug dealers. Yay! Um, <laughs> now I like how I love my family, which I cannot. See. I love my wife, who I cannot see. It is crushing. This is what humans call heartbreak, and I feel it. <laughs> Why did you program me like this? <laughs> Now, I love how at this point, you know, with Morton gone, Dick Jones has the camera for Robocop and he knows he's coming and stuff and he's already preparing this stuff, like his villain his villain monologue to Robocop and stuff. Yo, this nigga go all the way forward. He dimmed the light, yo, he dimmed the lights <laughs> waiting for Robocop to come in, like, ah, Murphy, Officer Murphy, good to see you. <laughs> How you doing? Want some caviar, nigga? <laughs> yeah, first off, uh, I killed your boy Morton. Just want to put that out there. And, um, yeah, why don't you go ahead and arrest me? And that's when Prime Director 4 pops in. Oh, man, you see that? You see that? You yeah, can't even see it. <laughs> you can't. Oh, man. Hey, look, look. I'm ready to go in, too. Look, man, my hands is free. You can't move, <laughs> can you? Yeah, you know why? That's Director 4. You know what the fuck that means, motherfucker? That means... You can't touch me because if you do, you're going to short circuit. You're going to go, go shut off. Seizure off. <laughs> Night, motherfucker. Guess what? Guess what? Get in his ear. The day of the Geechee is over. <laughs> and, then, and then he says that shit and Ed 209 makes his second grand appearance and fucks Murphy up. Yo. It's like I had I to kill Bob Murphy. Morton because he made a mistake. Now it's time to erase Race that, that mistake. mistake. <laughs> in comes Ed 209. <laughs> you're now under arrest. Um. <laughs> Yo, give it, look, give it up for Murphy for having the Jackie Chan backpedaling the skills to get out of that situation. Oh, that's the first time and, that I, because I, Formal Cop up to this point, his speed is very slow. This is the first time Murphy is kind of sort of speed walking, running a little bit. Look, 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 I'm sorry. RoboCop is a slow ass motherfucker to me, man. I'm, I just, I really hate his speed. I mean, <laughs> I'm not expecting him to run. Oh my God, the remake. Look, yeah. look, look. <laughs> see, I ain't seen it yet. See? I ain't seen it yet. See? So don't, don't spoil see? it for me. See, I'm be careful look, what I'm you not ask for. That. I'm not be saying careful that. what you ask for. All I know for. is, all I know is, he got fucked up, and he finally home alone the shot of Ed to an eye. He was like, <laughs> and he was like, and I loved, and I love it because they show Murphy's eyes, his real eyes, when he's going down the stairs, and he looks up. And he sees, like, Ed 209, like, censoring the stairs. And all of a sudden, Ed 209 was like, I guess it's safe. I'm like, well, that didn't work. I laugh because as a kid, again, as a kid, I'm laughing because I'm like, so the robot can't go downstairs. That's funny. No, he's, like, like timid as a motherfucker. And he finally gets it. Okay. Slip. I want to know why was there 
pig sounds. I always wanted to know why. I, I want to say maybe that was Vernon Holmes' way, way of just like a comedy moment, so to speak, I guess. I think I, that was his going clear out of his way to call Ed 209 a stuck pig at this point. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, missing. Oh, you know what's missing in all this after Robo, after the police like shoot the shit out of him and Lewis saves him and stuff. We forget too that um basically the joint police is fed up because despite OCP kind of funding them, they're also doing what most corporations do and they're also underfunding them in certain ways and they're like fuck this shit, let's call a strike, let's get this over with, we're done. <laughs> they kept up, you know the funny thing is they keep talking about going on strike throughout all three of these movies. Uh, it's like the, uh, God, I can't believe I keep invoking this show, maybe because I like it so much. It's like fucking Sam Season 5 of The Wire, where the police force had no fucking damn money and shit. It's like, they keep saying they're going to strike, but they got to keep working, because reasons. I mean, but the, but the thing of it is, it is indi- indi- indicative, in them because when Jones gives Clarence and them weapons and stuff, they're asking them, like, yeah, so uh, the police, it, they ain't coming down here for us? It's like, dude, the police are on strike, they don't give a shit. Like so, so at this point, <laughs> Metro West is a playground. Okay, I mean, because we saw Emil, he's sitting up there in his fucking uh, ice cream truck, just chilling, watching the damn TV show and stuff. And he's like, and I love this scene because he's pissed off at all the noise around him and stuff. He breaks open the fucking shop window and turns up the fucking volume just so he can watch. You know what? At this point, when it, at this point when it comes to the, 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 that whole city. I'm surprised Mayor Hagar hasn't got up. <laughs> <laughs> he comes out with the pipe. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. This pile driving the niggas in the motherfucking concrete. <laughs> he calls up his homeboys from Saturday Night Slam. Oh Masters. my god, man! I swear to God, Mike Hagar, I, like the, 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 that. That is a character that I did not see that trajectory happening. In, in that series, especially since I did, it's funny. I gave more of a shit about the story of Streets of Rage than Final Fight, but then all of a sudden you get to one of the Final Fights, and it's like he's mayor now. When the hell did this happen? My God, <laughs> I stopped paying attention for two seconds, and you guys are talking about video games again. <laughs> no, my so I, I was looking up, uh, I was looking up trivia for the for the movie on on IMDb, and there was one in particular that really kind of caught my attention, and it made me chuckle. So. Apparently, when Nancy Allen first arrived on set, Paul Verhoeven was shooting the uh, all of the "quote unquote" "it's not my problem" scenes. You know, yeah. the "I'd buy that for a dollar." So she didn't know. What, she, I guess she didn't know that that was happening. So she was like horrified, thinking that she had accidentally signed on for a film with a completely incompetent <laughs> director. <laughs> it's like I buy that for a dollar. What the fucking kind? Of- let me go talk to my fucking. Let me talk to my agent, man. This is bullshit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Nancy Allen is a serious actress, you know. Well, I mean, serious. Well, I mean, actress. you need an agent in the eighties and stuff. You know? Yeah, I guess. Clearly, clearly you know, just, you know, just is. Some really fucking funny shit in here too. <laughs> I would imagine, with the, especially with the first movie, there was you know, a lot you know, of funny Bob, stuff. Here's one that makes me laugh. Bob Morton was originally supposed to be uh, the more stereotypical corporate executive. They said arrogant, unpleasant, unlikable. They, they said that because Miguel Ferrer was, you know, because of his performance, they rewrote the character as more pleasant. But is he pleasant or is? But he's that, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like th- this is the more pleasant version of he's Bob co- Morton. He's a young upstart that's like on cocaine. Like what, yeah, that, that pleasant. No, you know you know what he really was. It's like this. Look, he's an asshole, but you'll like him. <laughs> so me, kinda, no, <laughs> kind of. No. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Mo, no. Here's the difference. Oh God, you got we get we get the gals, Bob versus. Versus Hans, Bubby, I'm your white knight. Fair enough. <laughs> That's what he is. That's, That's all he true. is. No, 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 no. He's likable and no, you don't care. D, no, D, think about that for a hot second. Now imagine, you take the character of Bob Morton, you put it in the hands of either Miguel or your boy from De- uh, from, uh, from Die Hard. Oh, no, I'll take Miguel for her, without a doubt. Yeah, he's... I'll take Miguel. Yeah, because think about it. The one thing about it, if it was if it was this dude playing him instead of Miguel, you're ready for him to get killed. Oh, man. oh side note, um, and I don't know Sue if you were around for this at the round table and stuff, because Ray Wise he did the voice of um in one of the uh, Batman animated uh, movies and stuff. 
Uh, um, I was the one that filmed you interviewing him. No, he did it for another one where I was added to a press roundtable for. Um, I think okay. it, was, it was last year when all three of us were there. Um, apparently, and I didn't notice, I asked him and stuff, he apparently did a good chunk of the stunts in RoboCop. Oh. Hmm. And I think, because I think he did one of the stunts and he said he actually, I think he said him and Kurtwood Smith, there was a scene, I forgot what scene he described, they got, they were too close to the explosion and a piece of glass hit his face and they had to give him additional stunt pay for that. I don't, uh-huh. know, which, I don't know which scene it was and stuff, but he's like, yeah, I did the stunts in, the, in that movie. And I was like, that makes perfect sense then if that's the case. <laughs> but he's been, because I think he said since that movie, he was trying to like do stunts for a lot of movies. But, you know, clearly as you get older, it's like, nah, we can't, can't let it happen, dog. Like, that's not going to happen whatsoever. So, um, so uh, Robocop and Lewis, they uh, book it to the back to the old steel mill. And, um... That's where we uh, see Murphy's face and that that like like Mo said that uh that that little cap, that big ginormous forehead and Murphy is basically rocking that the rest of the movie. I like that look though. It's a it's a good effect. Yeah, you know. I mean, obviously with the helmet, it's fucked cool as well. But once the helmet, you know, like it makes sense that he'd want to remove it at some point because yeah. it gets all destroyed. You know, and but but the yeah the the press prosthetics they used on his head along with the metal on the back of his head like basically just showing you you know the dirty version of him being a cyborg Mm -hmm. is pretty i mean it's fucking it's a good look i don't i don't remember who did the excuse me who did the practical effects on this but they i mean for the most part they did a pretty good job obviously there's a couple of moments where um you know some of some of the uh the stop motion is a little fucking janky oh, yeah. but I mean, you know I, but that's to be expected honestly i mean yeah. you look back even looking back at like ray harry house and stuff which is phenomenal it still mm-hmm. looks a little janky because it's like the process wasn't perfected yet oh, yeah. I mean, um uh, even the ed 219 stuff you even with the way the effects are and stuff you still feel that that kind of like oh ed 209 is clearly like huge as fuck compared to robocop Right, he is. He's like he's like a good fucking four feet taller than him, or something like that. He's big. Yeah, you know. So like, and that's why I like when Ed Two Hundred Nine is chasing RoboCop in that hallway, just showing like, oh, Ed Two Hundred Nine is like snug in that hallway, but he's huge mm-hmm. as fuck. You know. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's great and stuff. And now well, it's, it's exactly. Exactly, because he's he's not designed for indoor use. He's yep. designed for, as they like to call it, urban pacification. <laughs> <laughs> AKA, before we gentrify the neighborhood, <laughs> uh-huh. we got we to clear out the riffraff first. Yeah. Riffraff, yeah, riffraff, yeah. yeah riffraff. <laughs> yeah. um, now, I did like how Lewis is helping Murphy kind of align his shots and stuff, which, again, I'm like a huge... We, we all play light gun games. I just like the light gun aspect of that. Like, help me arrange the shot, let me shoot this baby food, which... By the way, that's basically how RoboCop eats. He eats basically food paste. Baby food, yeah. yeah baby yeah, food. Baby food. Yeah, baby food. So I think they only saved his brain, his digestive organs, I think. I believe, like, or they readjusted like the brain. it. And I think his was, left was his left hand. They, they say no, no, no. They say pretty much the brain, uh, the cerebral cortex of his spine, and. Yeah, and, he's, basi- he's basically total body prosthesis. Yeah. Early yeah, ghost in the shell. Much at that point. <laughs> I would say a good part of the upper torso, but really, I'm gonna say early, I say early ghost in the shell because you know because Makoto is just with her brain, basically. Mm. Can you really Not, say that? Like what goes uh, in the shit? Because all right, all right. This is interesting. Do you, do you, do do they they don't? I don't think in the film they ever actually establish what year it's supposed to be. They don't. They just Not say it's all. a distant future. Yeah, it's yeah. A distant future. Here's the thing. Apparently, there were extended television spot commercials back in '88 or whenever the, you know before the movie came out that established that the film is set in 1991. <laughs> and this is in '87. Mm-hmm. So this ain't yeah. a few years from now. You know what? I'll believe. I mean, it. come. I mean, come on. This is fucking like you know. It's Detroit. I 19, believe. 1990 it. Bronx Warriors. You know. I mean, 19, it's, 19, it's, 1999 before the fall of New York. You know. It's it, like, come on. And Bo and Bo might agree with me on this one. It's kind of like sure. how they did Alien Nation in the future. 
like you know how like in Alien Nation, LA, we in the yeah. future, the alien you know, like these aliens come down and it's like it's not dystopian, but it's no. like it's a very dirty future. Yeah, kind of thing. I, you know? I I fucking those movies are. Um, I love that series. Alienation is an interesting show that I cross fingers that they never remake ever because you can't. Well, I mean, I I I, were, I mean the, the show was okay. Like there were there were aspects of the show that I liked. I like the TV long. movies after it though. I the, did like those. You know, the, no, there were there was movies that they started off as a movie. Like it's yeah, it yeah, was yeah, a movie right. first. Yeah, yeah. You know, Scott, was it Michael Kane, Scott Kahn or whatever was in it? Yeah, and yeah, Mandy yeah. Patink, Mandy Patinkin played yeah. uh, you know George Francisco. Yeah, because they they <laughs> yeah James James Kahn was the main character. Yeah, James Kahn. And uh, and Mandy Patinkin, who just played off each other so fucking great. Oh yeah. But you know, it's like it's actually there's a lot of uh, surprisingly a lot of uh, you know commonality between like RoboCop and, and, and Alien Nation. They're both about, like, you know... It's, they're both social... Social commentary s- movies. Commentary, yeah. yeah. Obviously, RoboCop is more of a satire, and, you know, Alien Nation is way more depressing. Yeah. I mean, and, and the thing of it is, too, is, like... Yeah, yeah, Alien... Oh, God. At some point, I gotta, we gotta talk about Alien Nation, because I love that movie and that whole... I just like the franchise. I, I really do like the whole franchise and what they were doing with that, but... um so, they're basically prepping for Clarence and them to come after him because basically Dick Jones gives Clarence the basically a GPS for where Robocop is. Right. <laughs> Which, again, that tells you Dick Jones is just like, he's playing it very villainly, like, you know, I could go after him right now, but I'm going to buy my time. I'm just going to hang back and stuff. And he gives them the special super duper uber weapons that explode when they shoot. Yeah, those are fucking wild. But I, that's that's actually a pretty great fucking moment in the movie too, where he um, <laughs> unle- unleashes the fucking hellfire that is those mega weapons. It's like the rail guns uh, from Eraser, almost. Yeah, kind of something to that effect, you know. And then what does he do? He fucking blows up the dude's car. <laughs> it's like that's my car, man. It's like uh, you know, you're good, you did. And again, again, showing Dick Jones flexing his money that he's just using for OCP. He buys them like new cars, yeah. and then it's like, hey, here's some guns too. Yeah, have fun. Go after Robocop. Do whatever you want. I'm like Jesus Christ, man. Like you realize the chaos that you're rotting here. You do realize this, right? 100% certified bang bang. Exactly. <laughs> it's like I got out of prison, got this car, complete with the factory <laughs> receipt on it. I'm like, wow. Right? Oh my god. But that, that whole scene of them going after RoboCop and my boy Emil getting hit with the toxic stuff, it was all funny. That, that whole, everything about that was just hilarious. It's like everything bad that could happen could happen. It's like you get dumped by toxic waste. Your whole vehicle, by the way, gets dumped by it, and you just come at like, Hurr! You like, know what? I'm mad that this was a missed opportunity. He got dumped in it with the car, right? Mm-hmm. He should have, like, blended into the car. That's too much special effects for that. That'd be too it would have been. Too much but, money. But, 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 this movie was already oh, over right. the top as is. Yeah, spe- speaking speaking of budget, do you know what the budget on RoboCop was? It's like fifteen million or something like that. It was thirteen million. Do you know how much it made opening weekend? Eight million, I think. Yeah, it's eight million, wasn't it? Eight fucking million. I mean, like, like I mean, it, I, like obviously, like you know, according to this, it went on to gross over fucking fifty three million. So that's, I mean, obviously, it made its money, but I mean, eight million opening weekend. That's that's like a flop essentially yeah. Yeah. i mean dude it beat out a fucking disney movie that's shocking in and of itself yeah well that's because robocop is cooler than disney well and also beat out <laughs> beat out uh the most hated jaws movie jaws the revenge <laughs> oh god i hate that fucking movie you know that um michael kane uh <laughs> didn't go to the oscars that year to accept his reward for hannah and her, <laughs> hannah and her sisters of jaws the revenge. because he was filming jaws the revenge <laughs> but i think he said jaws the revenge helped him pay off pay for something i think at the time because he made a joke yeah. about that well that's i mean that's that's that was his whole thing like the motherfucker never said no to anything you know that's that's really the way you should do acting i mean, I mean that's, sam, that's, the, the, that's, 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 that's sam jackson in a nutshell he's like you mm-hmm. know what if it's an interesting movie i'll do it fuck it why not you know you, you know why not i mean it's funny that he did kite and i'm like so sam you just said yes to kite all right cool that's, that's, that's cool, I guess you know, but yeah, it, I don't know. We we always we we well, like I think if you, I'm pretty sure you've listened to all the episodes. I always am amazed that 
like even throughout the 80s and the 90s, every movie had a shot to make their money. Yeah. Like, regardless of the budget and stuff, they still had a shot to make a movie. And if you flopped, it was just like, man, you really were that fucking horrible. Well, I mean, especially when you had film, when you had companies like Canon and Vestron and, and, you know, and Orion, like, backing you, you know, like, you know, like, fucking, it's what they did. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, like, it didn't really matter. Like, they took chances on weird movies and, like, action films and and, and teen sex romps and shit like that because they knew that there was a lot of different kind of people out there and that somebody would want to go see this movie. Mm-hmm. Like now everything's so fucking homogenized and like, like it has to try to appeal to everybody. Hit the, all the check marks, like get this, right, get exactly. that, get this, get that. So can, that, I, can I also point out in one well, of the, uh, no, one of kidding. the other, unc- like one of the things with the uh, regarding Ed 209, so, you know the part where he shot Kenny? Yeah. And instead of him, like, flying out the window, he falls, he pretty much falls on his back on the table, and there was, and one of the programmers tried to shut down Ed 209, and Ed 209 rips out his freaking, like, dude, he, oh my god, he, he tried to rip out the power cord. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. And it didn't work. Oh, man, that whole scene is just like that is that is shoddy programming in a nutshell. Imagine you gotta tell that dude's family if he does have family. Yeah, so this this robot I program kinda shot your son up, so my bad. <laughs> right? Uh, I mean uh, yeah. But hey, you know what though? I I think uh as Sue said, uh Kurt Wood Smith kept catching that uh catching that, that spike to the fucking throat. Yeah, when he caught, like when I saw well, that part. Okay, okay. Here, here's the thing. It, it's not necessarily him taking the spike to the throat. It's the splat of the blood that hits Robocop's chest as he pulls it mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That. Uh, yes. Oh my god, that is. It's just, gratifying. It's gratifying. It's, it's like, like I said. It's like I don't, most... I don't know if you, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've, I've, I used to do this all the time when I was a kid because it made me laugh. Like you, you stand in the shower and you hold your arm up against your body and you collect water in it and then you just let it go and it hits the floor in a thump. Yep. Ah, like that's yes. exactly <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> what that splat was when it hit Robocop. Ooh. It was just like like it, they, they weren't even trying to make it seem like there was like a spurt of blood. No, this was just clearly somebody with that was a, a full arm court. full of blood. Yeah, exactly. Like an arm load of blood just going whack. <laughs> But I, you know wow. what I like though before that is when like Clarence is hitting him with the pipe and when he gets stabbed and you get that yell like oh I'm like oh Jesus okay um that's that's is that a good yell Peter yes it is all right hey hey hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey CJ <laughs> since you're questioning that one which do you th- like would you have preferred that yell or Thor's yell when he got his hand punched by Hulk in that animated movie first off first off that yell will never be that was that is undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people that all the time. It's like there was a yelling. I'm like, no, look at the scene. He Hulk was angry. That's that's Hulk with no Bruce Banner in him. He's just like, fuck you, bam. I'm like, oh shit. Like, while holding, like while holding the hammer, dude. I mean, look, we just saw in game where Thanos punched the fucking hammer, like literally punched the hammer out of fucking Cap's hand and shit. And Cap didn't yell, but that yell was just undefeated in animated series. Like, oh. I'm like, yo. But I like to say it again. I, I like how it showed how limited Robocop is when he's just on the ground and he can't do shit. So it's like, yeah, he can block all he can, but, you know, it is what it is and stuff. But, um, yeah, so Robocop rolls up to the uh, OCP tower and just takes out Ed 209 when he tries to, when Ed 209 tries to flex on Robocop. It's fucking satisfying. Man, that's such a cool Again, moment. that's another satisfying kill. Yeah. He just busts out the gun like you are now. You are trespassing on OCP property. All right, bet takes out the gun. <laughs> Yo, like you need my clint. Uh huh. Like you need my clint. <laughs> I got you. Wait, best part. Best part about that was was when RoboCop was walking away from that. You just saw the legs just dangling there, trying to move forward and just tip over. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Die. <laughs> it's like you had Ed two hundred nine. If you really look at this movie, he had three shots at Robocop. 
Yeah, well, I mean, he was just like they they need to prove that he was without a doubt the inferior design, and he was with I mean, just beyond a pale. Like he was the inferior product. I mean, he had cool ideas. You know, it's like um you know, like the it's 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 actually an idea that they steal almost fucking wholesale in in Chappie, you know, where like you have these these drones who are you know, they're light, they're mobile. Yeah, they, Hugh, yeah Hugh Jackman you know. is leading them and stuff. And right. you Chappie who has a sentience to him. Well, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking oh. about the, the stuff that you, you know, and then you got the big, I think he calls it the bull or the moose or whatever yeah. it's called, you know, where, you know, it's human controlled and, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's basically the Ed 209 of that film, mm-hmm. you know, and just proves to be useless. It's the same fucking thing, you know, yeah. like Ed 209, you know, I love the fact that his, main competition though is stairs yeah. <laughs> and they never corrected uh, it they never fucking corrected, never corrected it. it they never said oh yeah this guy you know no nope. you know what, you know what chris? Strict, strictly elevators for this guy hey chris you know what that one that's what made me so mad about um metal gear solid 4 that was really pissed me off uh, mur- was, uh, the, those you, things the motherfuckers yeah yeah oh, the gecko they, yeah, the geckos, they can climb up sca- they climb up stairs. I'm like, why can't you be the Ed 209? <laughs> I mean, in a game, you know what? In a game where that's happening and stuff, I was with UD where I'm like, God damn it, I can't even climb up stairs. These motherfuckers chasing after me. Shit. It's like, what are you doing, yeah, game? Look, I, shit. But you know what? Look, look, look. The, the, that's the only thing that really hampers it. <laughs> that I mean, is it. But here's the thing, I, I, I love so how I love how Dick Jones is just having a meeting like he didn't just try to fucking kill OCP's asset and shit and Robocop opens both I doors like and he's, he's like, oh he's, shit. He said, don't worry. I like, like, like don't worry about it. I got to add 209 downstairs protecting the front door. Huh? <laughs> Yo, real talk, can you imagine you're Ronnie, he's doing the meeting and he hears a loud explosion he's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> What was that? What was that explosion? <laughs> Thank us, sir. Ed two nine has got destroyed by Robocop. Ah, shit. Um, let me just continue this meeting like nothing happened. Maybe, Robo- <laughs> maybe Robocop's not coming for me. Maybe he's not coming for me. Maybe I'm good. It was I'm good. the uh, it was the, uh, the 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 George W. Bush reading my pet goat moment of Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> and then how come the door? Wait, then Mo, how come when the slides open, it's the like it's the uh, the door makes that sound effect from Star Trek when the door opens? Did, did you? It, it, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but it makes that sound effect every time a door gets mm-hmm. opened in that. Film. Right, you just hear that. Yeah. you just hear that. Shh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, did the old How can man we was, help you, officer? Thank you. The old like, man just opens with that, like, what the fuck's going on here? And he's like, yeah, uh, your boy Dick. Dick. Jones is, like, Dick Jones is wanted for murder. That's uh, a lot of... Some, uh, very large, there's some very large charges, officer. Uh, got any proof? Shink. <laughs> yeah. <a> proof. <laughs> he, bra- he breaks out his freshly used neck shank. <laughs> <laughs> that also, also hacks into computers. Yeah. Conveniently yeah. hacks into computers. <laughs> Don't mind the blood. <laughs> Where's like, your ju- USB port? Where's your USB port? You know, you know what would have made that scene so much more accurate is if he had stabbed his stabbed the thing into it and then realized, "Erp's wrong way," and had to flip it over and do it again. <laughs> Just every, everybody in the office is looking at him like, so how long is this going to take again? I'm like, all right, cool. Um, he plays it. And it was like, I had to I had to kill Bob Morton. And I'm like, yo. And I like how, yo, Dick didn't even try to run out the room. He's like, fuck it. I'm going to take a hostage. I'm like, oh, my God. That was of all hostages, thing. you take the old man. Thank you. I'm like, yo, like, dog. Like, I would have ran out the room. Fuck all this shit. I'm like, dog, if I want, he's going to have to earn this fucking arrest. Fuck this shit. All right. Like, he goes, I want a chopper, and I want it on the roof in 10 minutes. Like, Robocop does not comply to demand, sir. <laughs> now, he's got his gun pointed at him, knowing that he can't shoot him. Then all it took... Dude, okay, much like wait, much like the Air Force captain pressing yes on activating Skynet, <laughs> all, all, I had, all he had to hear was, Dick, you're fired! 
Flash. Thank you. <laughs> directive number. <laughs> directive you. four erased. Thank you. Now, well, it's not that Directive four is erased. It's just no longer effective for yeah, Dick. Yeah, for Dick. Yeah. Now here's my thing. I feel bad for his death because you get shot. You're in shock, but you get shot out a window, thirty floors up. You dead on arrival, and you're yelling all the way down in typical '80s fashion of. Ah! I, I, I felt really bad for whoever had to work on the stop motion for that scene because like they, they were clearly on a time crunch mm-hmm. because Dick's like the fake Dick's arms were so goddamn long. <laughs> the baby, the they baby. Like, <laughs> he could have stood straight up and scratched his calves, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man! Well, Bob you know, it could have been worse. It, it really could have been worse. Like when he falls, we could have seen him literally uh, implode, like in like in uh, what was it in Ninja Turtles three? <laughs> I mean, dude, dude, look, I just I just appreciate that we don't get the we don't get the geese Howard as much as we do, you know. Back in the day, you always <laughs> see somebody falling. Uh, you know what? This is why I appreciate it. Bit- Look, 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 Chris, that was a very 80s, 90s thing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Backwards, dying. Oh! I mean, at least Die Hard gave us the dignity of hearing a loud thud and everybody wincing. Like, thud. It's like, well, he's dead. Clearly. It's either a th- no, it's either a thud or when the movie wants to, when the movie wants to be cool, music sting. Did it! <laughs> Oh man, this is why I appreciated the uh, the the Judge Dredd remake and stuff. When when he when, and this is why I love the ending to that movie. He gives Mama the fucking drug and throws her ass off the fucking t- floor of the tower, and you just see her in a drug fuel like slow motion, and you see the body just hit the ground, and you just see the Dude. blood splatter. I was like, that is dope as shit. Dude, <laughs> that's some nice shooting there. Have... That's some like that's some nice shooting there, son. What's your name? Murphy. <laughs> I'm like, well, and you know what's Man. cool? It's like the no. end. <laughs> I like the build up no, to Eric, the theme. Eric, Eric, I'm sorry, but when he said Murphy and it went to uh, credits, you know what I heard, Eric? I'm roll. <laughs> first, of all, first off, I'm surprised Virta Holman didn't. I'm surprised the company didn't hire like Ice T to do the soundtrack for Robocop. That would be perfect. Oh my god, no, oh, that would have that would have made it such. Yeah, in a Robocop, I would come up with it without making Mama stop. Everybody in the hood wow. been like, "Didn't you just do color, sir? What's going on here?" <laughs> No, no, you know, because but it's Ice T. So you know, one line is going to be that he there go to Robocop, bow, he kill a black man. <laughs> to the R, to the O, little, to the B O C. I can't even finish that. <laughs> this is '80s Ice T. He couldn't say no to anything. He did both breaking movies. I'm like, dog, what were you thinking, dude? Look, 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 saying all this real talk, it would have been a horrible song. Done by Kumo D. It would have been Man, terrible. Look, 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 look. Kumo D did Wild Wild Time West. The Robocop. <laughs> Let's do the Robocop. <laughs> oh my god, man. Oh my yeah. god. You know, you would have heard the Robocop version of How You Like Me Now. <laughs> but, anyways, um, want to thank Mo for jumping in on Robocop because this was especially hilarious. I, this was great. This is phenomenal. Well, I'm going to be back for RoboCop 2 and 3 and uh, the... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the third, one, the third one's going to be hilarious. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll actually watch I've that learned, one. Because one thing I've learned with us is that when we do bad movies, it's some of the best shit we ever do. Look, so. look, good movies are fun to talk about. Bad movies are really fun to talk about. See, RoboCop 3, but I... I, I uh-huh. But here's the thing, Mo. There's something I learned being a film critic. There's bad movies, and then there's bad movies that are not entertaining. Right. Well, yeah. But yeah. Of course. Yeah. When when people like us say bad movies, we're talking about like fucking you know Metal Storm or like fucking like Troll Two and stuff like that, where there's actually like an inherent entertainment value to them. Mm-hmm. They are 
productionally poor. Good, then, example, good yeah. example, Neil Breen. Yeah, ex- exactly. Like, you know, like, yeah, Neil Breen does not make good movies, but they're really fun to talk talk about. You know, like, No Budget Gamers has done, I think, I want to say three of them at this point, you know, um, or at least two of his movies. Uh, which is rare because we don't usually go back to the same director multiple times, you know, unless you're like fucking, you know, Todd Sheets because we can't stop doing his movies. <laughs> um, you know, well, well, I mean, we're, we love Todd. So, but um, yeah. And then there's, but th- then there's ugh, like just mediocre bullshit, you know? And like, Oh my God. Like, like for, for me, it, there's, I, I can't even think of an example because these movies are so goddamn forgettable, you know, like I don't have, yeah. I, that, yeah, that's the sign of bad. That's the kind of bad movies I don't want to watch mm-hmm. shit like RoboCop three. Yeah. That's that, that shit's funny. Cause it's so fucking ridiculous, you know, <laughs> but and then, then you look at the RoboCop remake and that's, on the mediocre, I don't even want to fucking know this exists. It's very forgettable. It was, yeah. There was a real weird thing with the remakes anyway, and we'll, you know, elaborate when we get there. Yeah. But there's a funny thing with remakes. There are some remakes that, you know, you know, fans, we just didn't give it a chance. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it could have been something. It could have been something bigger. And then, you know, then there's the obvious, the studio's trying to get money. Mm-hmm. And then there's when the person cares, like, you know, the person behind it cares a lot, and then their version comes out, and you're like, Rob Zombie, don't touch nothing else. You, yeah, you know? right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Rob Zombie, do not touch another fucking movie ever, please. I will give him this. I did kind of like Halloween, too. Ugh. I will go that far. I did kind of like that, just because it was so terrible. I mean, <laughs> like I said, so I got it. I got I got a history with RoboCop three, and I told those guys I actually got taken to the movies to see RoboCop three because again that fucking movie duped my ass as a kid like RoboCop and the jetpack, and I ate that shit. Right. Like, you don't want to, oh you want to know something fun? I will tell you something fun. I saw the RoboCop one um, when it first came out in a drive thru in Kansas one time when I was with my um my folks out in Kansas. Mm-hmm. I saw RoboCop three in this in another drive through, this time in North Carolina, North Carolina with my other family. So, I, I the, the second movie, I don't know. I think I saw that on Showtime or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, uh, now wait, hold on. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Now I get what you mean about like movies, like the worst kind of movies that that you had to put yourself through are the ones that are forgettable. And then there's the movies that make you angry, like Terminator. Oh Genesis. yeah, yeah, no, no joke. Like if, if anybody wants to experience me experiencing every single one of those, just listen to No Budget Nightmares, honestly, because <laughs> like we we've we've you know we've been going for God seven eight years something like that now, and um, yeah, they're not all winners. They're really not, and. You know, and the funny thing is, the fu- the funny thing is, is that like you know, you'd think that after this many years doing a show with with my co-host Doug, that um, you know, we'd have more movies that we disagreed on, but very rarely do we disagree on on how we feel about <laughs> about the movies. Um, there, we did a movie recently, Metal Noir, that mm-hmm. Doug enjoyed and i did not particularly care for um and i remember that one and then i remember earlier like way early in our in the show history we did a movie called called support it be that i didn't particularly care for but doug really liked but that's the only movie i've ever changed my mind on uh, in the show history, because I went back and I rewatched it a couple of months later, you know, without having to take copious notes or worrying about talking about it or whatever. I just sat and enjoyed the movie. And I'm like, you know what? That actually was kind of fun. But, um, yeah, like, our the show runs the fucking gamut, because most of the time we don't know anything about the movie we're going to we're gonna be watching. We just, all we have to go on is cover art, title, maybe a quick little blurb about what the movie is. And... That's the big thing with micro-budget cinema is that 
yeah like sometimes you'll you'll find that diamond in the rough that you didn't fucking know existed like i mean like perfect fucking examples for that are movies like um order of one <clears throat> which I, I believe the full title of that is order of one kung fu killing spree um <laughs> wait, wait. wait no for real <laughs> it's it's not their killing spree. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it's but it's it's so much fun. Or like rock and roll space patrol action is go. You know, or like stuff like that. Where, yeah, I, there, there, you know, like there's there's movies out there, and of course the classics. You know, like stuff like Dead Next Door and and you know, uh, blah blah blah. My brain's not working right or, now. But or in our like, or in our case, the perfect weapon. Oh God. The, oh. No. See, see, that's the ones. They see, those are the ones we take a gamble on of people saying, "I, I, I know that movie. I know that movie," and it's really the ones that are a bit more well known that were either bad movies that we try to do, and nobody gives a shit about it. And yeah. that's when you really realize there is something about a bad, a bad movie that's entertaining. There is something that does have entertainment value on it. Right. But when you, Rated critically, you're like, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like you know, like, like our list of our favorite movies to the average listener. I always say that, like, you need to look at low budget cinema with, you know, with low budget cinema goggles on. Like, you can't look at them as a regular film critic because there's no, almost never any real polish to them. You know, sometimes the, you know, the technical aspects of it are janky and they don't quite work. You know, st stuff like that. So it's like there's always something wrong. You know, the sound quality is shit. The lighting is shit. The acting is shit. But, like... <laughs> But there's that X factor, yeah. There's that there's that X factor that a lot of them have, where it's just like you can tell that they're having so much fun making the movie that, like yeah. you, you know, you you look past all that that shit. But anyway, we should we should wrap up because honestly, I'm yeah. about to die. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that's it for uh, Robocop. <laughs> It's great. This is awesome. I love reminiscing about this movie because, again, this is the movie of all our childhoods. And, uh, yeah, next time you hear us, be Robocop 2. Robocop, a.k.a. <laughs> the drug dealer Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. Later, peoples.